Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Last night of the Bitzler Cup, we got ourselves the lower bracket finals. My name is DK Truman, and I am once again joined for uh, by Astini for this final showdown on the final day. And well, the, these last remaining teams definitely are very interesting to watch. Pretty much the best of the best. Yeah, two of them are at the mini major, so very interesting to show. Uh, to see if they want to show their strategies that they're planning to the major or are they hiding strats because so far we have lava waiting for infamous and apple king so the team that did not make to the major is waiting on the two major teams so interest to see what they're gonna show today if they're gonna go for the default strategy so mini invoker mini uh, monkey king noage string uh those may be tired to see I, I would not say tired to see because it's it's exciting to see over and over. They're just stomping games with those heroes, or if they want to try something new uh, to develop new strategies to the major. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is kind of interesting uh, that Lava, of course, are the team that are waiting in the grand finals, considering they did not have a good DPC season. But I think that primarily has to do probably with some personal circuit because it is the old thunder predator lineup and you kind of always expect them to have a good dpc run but they are looking a lot better the further down the line they go uh that like the multiple tournaments that i've seen them play even the end of the dpc league they started really building up and looking a lot better in their performance and now they're waiting in the grand finals but now first, we've got ourselves Apu, King of Kings versus Infamous, which is not going to be an easy match at all. And to be fair, the la like the entire playoffs, there was, I think, one game in the playoffs that I've seen that was not a one team gets ahead, then they throw, then another team gets ahead, then they throw, and then the initial team wins. It has been up and down the entire time, except for one game yesterday, and that was when Lava completely destroyed Infamous. And that was in uh, game number three. So I'm I'm honestly expecting, you know, a little bit of that curvature coming back between these two teams. But Infamous, I mean, they're so good at the early game. Like, I don't think any team that I've seen in the South American region dominates the laning stage as much as they do. Yeah, they have that young blood. So you have, let's say, the best mechanically gifted players are the ones that are playing at their their peak so definitely laning stage something they have strong on the other hand a uh, macro game so taking decisions after the laning phase something that they are looking to improve they have excel which is already an experienced uh, captain so he can help that but still they seem sometimes lost in the mid game and those things happen that you mentioned that one team looks like it's going to win and they go straight mid and they lose the team fight with buybacks and the other team just goes straight mid and then the other team buys back. And then suddenly everyone is dead and there's Roche up and they're like, why they were not fighting for Roche? Some weird uh, things you see that's pretty common South America. Sometimes I was coaching Hokori and I'm like, guys, was that a screen or you guys playing overthrow? Because I, I can't handle more TP's mid and fighting and fighting and fighting. Take a deep breath, look at their item timings, and try to wait for a team fight that's worth taking. I guess that's what the team needs a bit. And they seem to be on the right path, right? Because they did an uh, amazing performance at DPC. Uh, they had a second place beating Beast Coast. So, yeah, very promising team. Yeah, the, especially, uh, like, there, there are a lot of teams in the South American region that are trying to fight for that top spot, and you don't have, like, Infamous, well, last year it was also Thunder Predator, just constantly being the number one and number two, um, well, Beast Coast and Thunder Predator, and now you've got a lot of different teams, also Apu King of Kings, a little bit of a mixture from uh, a whole different amount of planes, and they're going to be playing up against Infamous. Of course, they have uh, now Sexy Fat Pack, uh, it's been for a couple of days now. Weeks instead of Valky. Um, yeah, Sexy Fat. If I'm not mistaken, you used to coach him in the bait lineup. Yeah, yeah. I coached him for a while since uh, he started with us in Furia. And that ended up in at B8, so it lasted more than one year. Uh, usually like the pandemic year, so... <laughs> Didn't oh, yeah. feel like one year. It's like one, <laughs> one year that just bypass that we lost of life but yeah 
it was uh, interesting uh, to work with him. Also, young blood into the scene, very motivated to show results. Still struggling to show some consistency, but hopefully uh, that uh, Bitzer Cup and the Mini Major will be the opportunity for him to show that consistency that we are waiting for. Yeah, definitely looking forward towards this matchup. We saw some uh, amazing performances yesterday coming out from uh, Benny and Mini uh, on the side of Apu, King of Kings, Infamous. Uh, I I gotta say most of it collectively just going nuts. Lumiere was actually very solid in his performance as well. The only downside that they most of the time had was Alone was always broke. Uh, like he, he won his mid lane, did his stuff, and then. Uh, all the farm went on towards Lumiere, and then you looked at the end of the game, and you see like his Ember Spirit being sixth in net worth or something. And you, eh, you, you can't, at one point, you can't let everything on towards a PA. But it seems that the draft is live, so we'll be heading in right now to see what heroes get to be chosen and picked up. And it's actually not too surprising that Apple King of Kings banned the Quap because I quickly looked over their statistics in the last month of Dota. They have played Queen of Pain a total of zero times and banned it 22 times, which is a pretty nutty statistic. Yeah, it shows two things about them. First, that Mini is not playing the hero, so their mid laner, of course, is famous for playing Volker, SF, Monkey King, usually those three heroes. And also, it shows something about the playstyle of King of Kings. They love to win lanes. Of course, every team loves to win lanes because it makes your game easier. But they really draft tours to that. It's the main focus of their draft. So some other professional teams, when they draft, they look for some Roche damage, uh, tower damage, some control, some catch, a combination of those. And King of Kings, they want to win lanes. And then they believe the game is going to be easier. That's why they ban Queen of Pain, strong laner, and pick Weaver, I guess, the strongest position for us of now. Yeah, but I'm seeing something scary. The Bane pickup for Infamous. They did, however, lose a game yesterday with the Bane. But currently, Affliction, in the last 12 games that he's played with Bane, he has won 11 of them. So, a very nasty statistic to deal with. Spirit Breaker as well, very good against the Weaver to catch him out because you can't shakut your way in Invis, you're gonna get hunted. And if Apu watched the matches yesterday, I am very much expecting a Morphling ban. Because there was a Morphling plus Spirit Breaker game, and that is definitely not something that you want to see a Sini, the double cow charge. Yeah. When you pick Bane here, uh, usually teams want to go Beastmaster because Bane cannot uh, deal with units. And then I was wondering in my mind, is Sexy Fat like a Beastmaster spammer? He plays the hero, but it's not like he, his biggest comfort zone to pick here so early in the draft. But Lycan, they are showing that they're uh, practicing with their hero. They picked once against Infamous. Uh, they lost with it, but then they picked against Hokori. They won. So it seems like a good choice uh, having units against Bane. And also when you play against Spirit Breaker, because Spirit Breaker, he doesn't offer you team fight. What he offers you is mostly pick off. And you want to do those pick offs at heroes that they are alone, of course. Or maybe they're just like two heroes and you want to start a team fight with Spirit Breaker uh, where the team has less numbers. But if you play Lycan, you are looking to do a five man very early in the game. And if you are Barra, you don't want to charge into five heroes. So I already like the approach of King of Kings here with this Lycan pick. It is radiant. Uh, Lycan is uh, a hero that the uh, Apu King of Kings plays a decent amount of. Of course, uh, it also has its downsides, mainly that no ulti means no glory. Um, Mini has actually also played it a couple of days ago, so I think it is a bit interchangeable. Not that I think he actually got completely destroyed that game, because he did very little to nothing <laughs> at one point. Uh, yeah, that was actually a very good game to watch. But yeah, he was against the Timber Saw. There was like nothing that the like could do at one point. Regardless, uh, the uh, Apu King of Kings definitely are going to need a bit more control. Because uh, Weaver Lycan, I mean, unless you get like a Centaur creep, there is zero control between the two heroes. Yeah, they might play the Lycan 
for Mini, and I guess that's the approach that King of Kings is trying to develop at uh, Bitzler Cup. Because when you play those tournaments that are outside of DPC, of course you're playing to win, of course you're doing your best when it comes to, to the game, but you're developing new strategies, so you're not playing your strongest strategies, you're just trying to have new strategies. And I've seen like Mini, he's been playing like pubs with Morphling, Gyro also, which are heroes that Benny plays a lot. So maybe maybe they're looking to have those heroes that two or three players can play the same hero. And Lycan could be one of those. So very interesting uh, that Mini has already played the hero and that opens up a lot uh, the heroes they can pick right now. Yeah, like, uh, you know, with the Mars that you can swap between the mid and the off lane and, well, a decent amount of heroes. Monkey King can be a four, can be a mid. But you can swap things around, can be a safe lane even. Very quickly picking up the Tide and Ember here. Lesh actually, it's a funny to see the Lesh pick up on the side of Infamous because yesterday Lava, all three games against Infamous, they first phase banned the Lesh. And Lesh is not a hero that you first phase ban pretty much ever, but they know exactly that they do not want to deal with Infamous's Lesh and it's like, it's scary. It, it deals with like most things in the game. It's pushing, it's Roshan, it's team fight. It's, uh, it usually builds sustain, it's a ton of uh, magic damage, but also adds inf some pure damage with the, uh, um, with, uh, his second spell. So it's a very nasty hero to deal with, especially if you lane it with a Bane. If it's a, f a safe lane Lash, of course, you could always swap it towards mid in case it's necessary, but if you lane it with the Bane, you just get the Nightmare into Split Earth, and that's a t stupidly long stun. But I also do really like the Timber sword Saw choice here because there is like so far nothing that can kill a Timber. Yeah, seems like amazing Timber, especially because they know or they imagine it's a tight five, right? Usually uh, it's Nuages playing those uh, position five melee heroes. And unless they want to do some shenanigans like playing like a safe lane or playing like a mid and Ember safe lane, they need to stick. Uh, with that tight hunter as position five so already on a pretty good matchup against the position five uh one of the best combos with lycan is rave king and of course timber destroys rave king so seems like amazing timber pick also it's a hero that can stay alone in the lane after you reach level three or let's say four and that allows the spirit breaker to play the entire map and you want to have this extra hero with you if you are a Lash, right? You want to control the runes, you want to steal stacks, and if your position 4 is able to play together with you, that's pretty amazing. So, pretty solid draft from Infamous so far. Okay. The Ember's not going to get much up. Of course, we even can slither about every once in a while, but... Uh, yeah, Lycan cannot really solo lane if it's... Uh, against the Bane, because the Bane can set up with whatever safe laner they choose on Infamous, so Weaver always has to be kind of in the vicinity. Uh, Tidehunter is terrible at ganking. Uh, like, uh, uh, if it's a 5, like, unless you get like a Blink Dagger or you have your Ravage, the hero does very little to go for any gank potential. And yeah, that's where the Spirit Breaker, as you mentioned, comes in, does a lot of work to try and open up the, uh, well, the map... A lot for his team, Timbersaw, as you said. If it's a tied five, which honestly, if you're Apu right now, you're thinking, how can we do this where it's not a tied five? Because that is going to completely suck. <laughs> There's yeah. very little that works well. But I guess they must do the tied five, so they need to think possible hard carries. Yeah, Luna. It would be either Luna or Gyro that are hard carries that have a decent matchup against Timber, so. Good choice. I'd say it's not good, uh, their matchup that they have as Luna Tide, but considering they were playing already against the Timber, that's the best choice they had. It's a tough choice, especially considering that Morph got banned, otherwise Morph would have probably been your best bet this game on the side of uh, Apu, but... Well, with it being banned out, it's going to be a pretty tough affair because this Lesh looks like it's going to, for the most part, have a pretty free game. I mean, the team fight on Apple King of Kings, they've got Ravage. That's a given. Luna, a lot of... Like, they have a solid amount of magic damage. But once BKBs get picked up on Infamous, you can't kill them. Uh, they have no BKB piercing effects whatsoever on Apple King of Kings. 
Ember Spirit Root, Tide Hunter Ravage, and the Luna Mini Stun. It's very limited in terms of control. Yeah, also, either like, they have Amber, I know, but they cannot deal so well with a PL or heroes. Yeah, PL is just the hero that I'm thinking about that Luna cannot deal with the heroes, so they can go with PL because Amber is not gonna scale that much. It's, it's gonna be. If they pick PL, it's really hard for King of Kings here. Yeah, you build him up tanky, and while well, that is something that Apple King Kings can't deal with, that makes the Timbersaw also very problematic. But it's going to be the Gyro. Well, you said Luna or Gyro. Well, one team picks up the Luna, the other goes for the Gyro. Yeah, Gyro is a decent hero against the Lycan, at least uh, at lane. Afterwards as well, you got that flat gun and just melts those wolves at the very least. Also, yeah, you're here I... to build Stanky, so uh, it feels like Apple King of Kings might lack a lot of damage later on. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Now, Infamous Draft seems a bit weird for me because you have Gyro and Lash are those heroes that you just want to gather like BKB as Gyro and siege the enemy tower. But for that, you need some hero that either covers like an Abaddon or that offers some stun that you can play together with Lash. And I feel the Spirit Breaker doesn't match their draft. That's the only thing. Otherwise, their draft looks nice. But I, I, yeah. don't, uh, I don't see like you're pushing towers with a Lash and a Gyro. And what is this Spirit Breaker doing? Well, he's probably tag teaming with the timber saw somewhere else on the map, charging at people. Because uh, I, I guess the main reason that the timber saw is here is just to hunt down the weaver every single time, and uh, the lichen as well. Like the lichen tries to run away, his shapeshift about to end, and you see the spirit breaker just uh, chasing him until the end of well the game. Also, you get a shard, you break the tide hunter, which is pretty nice, even though it is a five position tide. But uh, having a break is always. A nice plus, even though no one ever gets the shard on Vara, because everyone's like, no, I, I need my Shadow Blade, I need... Which, of course, you can upgrade into a Silver Edge regardless. I need my uh, Ags, I need my BKB, but I really do like the shard. It would nope. be interesting if King of Kings, they do some shenanigans on lane phase. Maybe they try to start it as a three lane against the Timber, because you can kill the Timber before he reaches level three. That's one option. The other option is just like uh, playing three aggressive lane because Luna is amazing at three lane. And if you play aggressively, you are near the Ancient. So one of her support can, can be stacking and things like this. Because if they manage to shut down the Timber in the early game, they can definitely snowball with Luna, Lycan, Amber. They have lots of heroes that can play really, really well on the early game. Yep, it's going to be uh, the question, are they going to throw out some shenanigans? So far, I see Penny Bottom, so Serum as well. I don't think that they're going to go for anything wild on the side of uh, Apple King of Kings. Alone is looking for Benny, but they're a little bit too slow on the rotation to get that first blood secured. Though, also something a that I'm... What? Quick question. I just want to hear your prediction. Who do you think is actually going to win this game? 30 seconds to battle. All in all. Everything combined. Apple Kings. You're going... Okay. I'm going infamous because the Affliction's a god. I don't like Barra here. And it's... I know it's just a position four. But I guess it ruins all my perspective on their draft. I don't like Luna here because I just mo most of the time despise Luna. <laughs> like against any other safe laner in the game, Luna wins a one v uh, loses a one v one fight. Yeah, but then you play on a timing, right? That's the thing. Yeah. Like Luna doesn't have good uh, hard carry matchups, so it means you are on a timer, and you are you play really well on that timer because you have a lot of Roche damage, you have a lot of tower damage, you have an aura that helps your team to five man, and that's exactly what you need against Abara. Timbersaw taking a lot of damage. Already trying to go for the bully game. Serum even has himself an Orb of Venom on the Tide Hunter for more harass purposes. They're missing creep kills though, so get back, Penny. 
Harassing is nice, but you also kind of need to get something out of the lane. Yeah, they really want to delay that level 3 on Sacred, and I guess they're doing well on that point. Also, one thing that I want to know is if Honey, if he's going like for Eul Scepter, which is amazing against Barra, or he goes for Vessel, which is also amazing against Kimber. He has like two amazing eating choices. Uh, me personally, I would do both, but Vessel first. <laughs> Yeah, Vassal into uh, the Yules, and then at the end, of course, you get yourselves that beautiful Aghanim Scepter, which is always a nice addition to your uh, toolkit. Weaver is such a weird hero. I I despise it, but it, that's for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> Mainly as a support, it's just terribly hard to catch him. Any hero that has an 8 invis is just never fun to deal with. I hate bounty hunters and Ricky, especially Ricky. Ricky is like my most hated hero to ever play against. Dyer's courier has been killed. So Timber lost his cool here. No regent for him. Is the other's cunning play. Yeah, I also hate playing against the invis hero. I guess that everyone besides the guy that's playing the hero hates, right? <laughs> yeah. Such a pain. Some of them are not that bad, like a bounty hunter is annoying, but... You dust him, he's, he's still screwed. The rest of all, all those mobility spells as well. Sacred still not level 2, finally gets his reactive armor. There, a charge comes in, turn behind the tower. Takes a bit of damage, is still a tide hunter. But uh, is also a strength hero. <laughs> that was a lot of damage. And a bit of a mistake fighting the timber saw in the trees. Uh, I guess Timber is one of the best picks against Apu Kings. As we mentioned, like Queen of Pain is a hero that has strong lanes, so they ban the hero. Uh, the hero can play all lanes, Queen of Pain. But Timber, you know, he's just playing off lane, but he's always playing against a melee position 5 because that's what Nuages picks 99% of the time. So if you know you are playing against a Tide Hunter, against an Ogre, against a String Protector, maybe even Undying, it's always good to be a Timber. And in general, like this, this meta consists of primarily strength heroes in every lane that you uh, have to deal with. I mean, Wraith King is probably the strongest core out there at the moment. It's pretty much a PA, but then tanky. <laughs> yeah. What I feel so good about Wraith King is like lane shoving. He's really good with his skeletons. I think people don't give the right value to that. That's what really makes the hero broken, that you can shove lanes like and be on a team fight on another lane. You can also tank through the glyph, which make you like you just do Roche and then you can just march through a lane and tank entire glyph. Because otherwise any other hero, they're gonna glyph, your creeps die, you need to wait uh, to the next wave, they uh, cut the wave and then you're just losing time five manning around. But Rave King, that cannot happen. Michael going for mini? No. He's gonna steal the water rune at least. Oh, Affliction got some bugs on him. But we'll uh, not take too much in the end. Yeah, I did see something very important that someone just typed in the good old chat of the Twitch. Uh, I th it was, I, if I'm not mistaken, Hans is that p played a weaver with a power treads BKB da uh, Daedalus as like his main items. I uh, that was a that was a game that I've very rarely been so I guess on edge it was a, <laughs> against the old sexy fat that sexy that uh, I guess it's because he was against a phoenix right and he wanted to hit the egg with geminate attack I'm not saying that's the right approach it's just like the reasoning behind it yeah, I just hope he's not going to do it again and uh, stick to the items that you just mentioned, of course, the, uh, the sp <laughs> no, there's Spirit no Vessel, Yule's bottom lane. Penny taking some damage, but Sacred doesn't have any mana left. Oh, it's a Timber Saw and he's got himself the Ring of Health, so he's uh, pretty A-OK -okay right now being level 4. Yeah, something I'm worried about for Apple Kings is that Honey is not being able to stack. There's just one stack that probably is gonna go for Mini, and I would love to see the Ancients being stacked for Benny. He's really gonna need it to, let's say, 
not really recover the game because he's having a decent lane, but to snowball with his timings. Yeah, Numia already 500, uh, well, almost 600 gold ahead of anyone else in the game. Uh, the Gyrocopter having a pretty solid top lane, got himself a kill as well. There's also a hero that can farm up Ancients and whatnot very quickly with uh, the Flak Cannon. Michael in trouble, does have a charge. He's gonna charge right through Mini, and Mini actually missed his Slight to Fizz, jumps in aggressively, still finds the kill onto Michael in the end. So we'll uh, at least be able to pick it up. But that was a very sad slight to fist attempt. <laughs> yeah. But something sad for Apple Kings is that their catapult's already gone. So they love to do that play where they bring both supports to the mid lane. But they don't have the catapult to do that siege damage on the tower. Also, Infamous, they're ready here. And Honey might die. Yeah, no. Shikuchi. Is Shikuchi right there then walk back towards alone to i guess look if he was in the trees and then oh yeah i only have level two shikuchi actually level one shikuchi that's a 12 second cooldown i mean it's even though normally weaver is actually very good against bane just being annoying and the bugs you don't have to actually to deal with the bugs but in the laning stage for instance if you just shikuchi they have an invis ward and they hit you with a nightmare you're, you're just most of the time dead Yeah, that's why we see a lot of Bane being picked against Weaver. Also, Bane is so complete the hero, right? You can play aggressively with Finn's Grip. You can also play as a cover, not exactly, but uh, with a Nightmare. It's quite useful to kite spells, to save heroes. Amazing lane stage. And it's gonna be a non stop fight at mid lane. Judge coming in on Mini alone, trying to pop all of his damage as much as possible, but he is out of mana, so he's out of everything. They will find the kill onto Hansus in trade. So one for one, Affliction just taking some damage from Serum. The Bully Tide coming in, level 2 Anchor, level 2 Gush. But in the meantime, Sacred already got the first tower secured for Infamous in the bottom lane. I mean, to be fair, no one can stand in that lane anymore. Yeah, Benny might want to be back because... There are three waves coming. That's oh, really, no. really important for me. Big fat mistake from Mini. He tried to do the uh, fire remnant dodge by uh, remnant uh, throwing the remnant past where Michael's charging from, but he went a little bit too short. So he still got hit by the charge and dies. That's a painful death on Mini. And Lumiere is 1200 gold of, ahead of anyone else. Like, he is farming insanely fast. Yeah, he went for a first item, Crystallis, now heading towards the Agony. Mid lane again, Mini might be in trouble. Charge coming up from downtown, Michael. He'll be there soon enough-ish. They <laughs> want to go for it though, but continuing the charge is a little bit too high risk. In the meantime, alone getting caught again, though does a lot of magic damage. They gotta be careful. In comes Benny charging forward, doesn't have his ult. Doesn't have the damage. Affliction gets rid of Serum. Benny is in trouble. Nightmared up as well. They've got the charge. Can they lock down the Luna as much as possible? Michael did attempt to try and go for the charge up on top of the high ground. Double bash. There we go. And they find the kill. That is painful on Benny. Michael gets level six. Hanses is in trouble. Does just barely get himself Shikuchi'd out of there, but that is uh Well he's actually dead. Michael's faster. No mana. Oh okay. Got him. <laughs> I really didn't get what Benny did here. He is a level seven Luna that played like a level twelve Luna. He played like he had ultimate and four points at Lucent Bean and had just one. So not yep. so sure. Gotta hit him with that 75 damage, and uh, haha, I harassed them. And yeah, the alone just walks away like, okay, yeah, sure, that tickle. I'll uh, I'll survive it. I even get myself uh, my my uh, magic wand charges refilled. Thanks to you. I don't mind, yeah. and uh, that is painful because now the yeah, I mean, he's just growing stupidly fast. Oh, Fiend's Grip onto Mini being held down. Serum does not have his level 6 just yet. And they're going to go for Benny again. This is definitely not a death that you can afford. 
They'll turn their attention to Serum instead because Benny is a little bit too far to reach, but they get themselves everything. 10 kills already on the board, mid tier two, uh, one tower being able to get secured. Sexy Fat hasn't done anything this game yet. He's gonna do, he's gonna die. Well, okay, he's done two things then this game. <laughs> you asked for twice. something, here he is. Why, why are you such a hater? Come on, he's doing something. Oh, infamous, just, yeah, 5k net worth lead in 11 yeah. minutes. Uh, Lumiere is one item le left for the Ags. Like, they're going for Sacred, but it's a Timbersaw with max reactive armor stacks going on. They'll turn their attention to Affliction because you can't kill a Timbersaw anymore at this point. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is like... Apu King's playstyle, and they just have this playstyle, and they always go all in on that playstyle. So we've seen like a Tide Hunter and a Weaver. I guess Weaver was four, Tide was four also. They were trying to kill a Lash Rack alone. And then they were fighting again in the mid lane, and Tide didn't have level six yet. So they're just like fighting, 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 fighting non stop with both supports. But if they don't have a nice game, super hard. Well, they're gonna go in on alone and we'll be able to find a very big kill. Currently, uh, the Lash only has bots, so it's very fast. Can be mobile all across the map, but no sustain, no survivability whatsoever. Probably your best target to try and take down every single time. And yeah, now they finally have Ravage, so they can have those team fights and might get something out of that. And in uh, the meantime, Lumiere is done with his Ags, you know, casual, chrysalis, uh, <laughs> Aghanim Scepter, power treads after uh, 12 minutes. Yeah, Satanic is next item, he knows exactly what he needs and that's just he needs sustain. If he survives the fight, he's gonna win. I hate that build where you skip BKB. Uh, I, I don't see reasons for skipping BKB at any game, like... I don't know. Seems too greedier for me. I know it's probably gonna work because they're so ahead, but. Oh, Ravage is blown in mid, alone dropping low. Does get killed off. Serum does get traded out, but there's Affliction as well. Still has the Fiend's Grip onto Sexy Fat and goes. Hold down the like, and they get themselves a three for one trade. And, well, I, I can agree with you on the. for the most part. Uh about the BKB though in a game like this I you're afraid of yes the Eclipse and the Ravage I would say but for the most part the the one thing that could really still melt him in terms of physical damage is probably gonna be the Lycan and you need to just be able to sustain against like and I, I do agree with you as well I think BKB is probably just the more safer choice so I love the fact that he just thinks I, I'm already that rich, I might as well just skip everything, you know, just go for the big tanky items. And at that point, there's definitely no chance to die. Yeah, I just think like with BKB, okay, Saren's dead again. So with BKB, you can guarantee Roche, and then you have Aegis, and then with Aegis you can farm two more items. That's at least my point of view here. But uh, I understand, I understand, I'm just not a big fan of that. Okay, he changes his idea, you see? He's with me, man. Trust me. It almost sounds like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so, sometimes, uh, well, I used to joke this, like, when a... Okay, team fight might happen? No. Yes. Well, Affliction, Bane, gonna get caught out, trying to stay alive. Nightmare will eventually get die killed by the Shiguchi, but that's definitely a trade, because Mini is dead. Benny is trying to run away. He doesn't have his BKB yet. And, uh... They lose their two main cores on the side of Apple King of Kings, and now you can continue your story. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, okay, uh, I'll just go to totally another point. I'm really surprised that Apple Kings, they get such good results just playing this play style, because they're so far behind, and they cannot, like, take a deep breath and see, like, oh, maybe we need items to keep fighting. They just keep fighting, and they fight, and they trade, like, one hero for three, and it's even, like, you could... Uh, uh, you could say like, oh, Luna is farming. No, Luna is dead on that team fight. They simply cannot stop. They have like no breaks, you know? They're just like max speed all the time. It's so weird. But yeah, okay. Uh, back to the BKB point that now he wants Satanic. 
Ah, uh, he, 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 he's with oh, me Benny's again. Oh, gonna die again. <laughs> yeah, Benny's gonna die again. No, or Benny. Not. Yeah, well, there's a bot no. charging somewhere. Oh, from miles away, like a shapeshift comes through. Charge gets ended. Sexy Fat's going for affliction. Can he get the kill though? Fiend's Grip holds down Sexy Fat. Like it will be held at bay. Sacred's just gonna walk away. They do lose affliction, but then again, you know, you spend a like and shapeshift for a Bane. Position 5. It's not really what you want to do because right now your shapeshift's about to end. I don't know why he's going for Lumiere. Because he has no TP and he oh, had he that doesn't. Info. Yeah, but he does have a team and it's just like your shapeshift ends. Why are you there? <laughs> Their car has no brake, man. They cannot stop. Oh, in the trees, alone looking for Mini. He jumps to safety, gets himself out of there. But, or so you think, this is where the Barra comes in. Gets rooted, though. Or side fist gets dropped. Oh, sent back to Sacred. Zappy, zappy, pure damage all the way through. Yep, that's what you got Michael for. He's the cleanup crew. Yeah, I think here, Apu Kings, they should like always avoid the Timber. And if they want to pick up fights, that they pick fights away from the Timber. Oh, Benny? <laughs> Does Michael want to press solo kill or what? Eclipse! They might kill him off. Nope, income sacred. Thank you very much for holding him at bay. Alone is here as well. Sexy fat. Oh, who am I going to take? The Ravage is blown. He does have his Pulse Nova on. Takes a lot of damage, though. Oh, my lord. He just melted the sexy fast creeps. Benny re-walked back into the fight, which was obviously a little bit of an oopsie-daisy. The chase will continue on, and they finally managed to get themselves a solid fight. Sacred's still, like, unkillable. And now that Lumiere is here, you kind of need to just dip. But another situation where, you know, Benny walks in, didn't really do anything there. Like, he hit uh, like two Lucent Beams. And maybe two auto attacks, and then just died. But without a BKB, Luna can't fight. Yeah, and they spent all their cooldowns uh, beside Shapeshift, so they need to play a bit more still for the next minute. Oh, about the Sedanic that I. When I used to watch like games with my players and I would just say and the player immediately changes, right? And I say, okay, those guys, they, they pay for a Stini premium, right? They hear me real time. So I say, okay, it's BKB and then they change, you know? Unfortunately for you, he's going back for that satanic. Is yeah, he doesn't have the premium package. Nah, so for him. he's just got that uh, free pass. Gotta spend the big bucks to make the big bucks. Weaver, Fiend's Grip taken down. Actually, there was a four kill streak on the Weaver. But a double kill being secured. Tide still does not even have a point in Kraken Shell. Like, wouldn't you just get one value point at this point? Just one. <laughs> yeah. And again, what did I mention? That they need to chew for a while, right? Because they didn't have Ravage. They didn't have Luna Uti. So they just need to chew a bit. And then... They are looking for a team fight again and again and again. Like 7k behind, no ravage, looking for a fight under enemy tier 1 tower or around there. Uh... Yeah, but look at Alone's game. Like, his team is stomping hard. And then look at Alone, his net worth. He's 1, 5, and 11. He's below his Bara in net worth and farm. Like, he, he's actually having a terrible game because they keep jumping him. But in trade, as you mentioned, they find like three, four enemy heroes every single time alone dies. Yeah, because that's the thing. He doesn't have a hero that actually covers him. So if instead of the barrow, it was Abaddon, Oracle, whatever, sexy fat, sexy dad. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Rip sexy dad. Dead. But it, Dead. Also, it also has a lot to do with the build, right? He, he bought travel, which is not wrong. But he didn't play like head travels. He played like head Kaya Sanj or a casual hood and something else. Because he's like looking for fights non stop. So he has travel and has only 100 creeps. You would expect him to have 180, close to 200. Like the gyro has 300. Whoa, that's impressive actually in 20 minutes. <laughs> so he's not farming with travel, he's not splitting the map. He's. 
not using that to guarantee he's gonna have all the runes. So it's quite weird the way he's been playing with the itemization. But in the end, you know, what does it really matter? Lumiere is going to carry you hard to the finish line. He's going for that Daedalus next item. Just, you know, pure raw damage. Got that DD as well. Just need to be careful. You? Yeah. I, I guess he can one versus five here. Radiance with satanic DD. Yeah, probably. Close to at least. And Michael's charging top. They know exactly what's coming. And he dodges it with the uh, fire remnant. However, there is a homing missile chasing him. No, Mini! No! Dunk. <laughs> but again, why are you gathering as five against Aegis? And not like using Mini to split the map, using Weaver to split the map, using Lycan to split the map. They have three heroes that can so easily split the map, but they are just gathering as five at the same lane that the hero with Aegis and DT is. It's just like, okay, I'm gonna make it easier for you to push my tower. And... Serum? Okay, Serum Still then. does not have a Kraken Shell, so every stun is just full duration. Oh, no. Just get a level in Kraken Shell! Who cares about your max level Anchor Smash? Uh, sexy fat. Sexy dead. Yeah, sexy dead. Fiend's grip onto Mini. No one to interrupt it. it happened again. Make that four. Don't really know why you're still continuing this game at this point. <laughs> just to say GG. Yeah, and it really hurts because they just killed heroes and they have a wave coming to the tower. Their bottom wave is also close to the tower. The top wave is past the river. Because all the heroes of Apple Kings, they died at the jungle, not shoving waves. It's, it's again about, about the team play style, which I can't really blame because they are winning matches with this, they got top 4 on DPC, they're going to the Major. But I think it's like this all-in or nothing on fighting non-stop, it's... It would be better if they could sometimes understand that they need to change their approach because the early game didn't go as expected. And honestly, you know, we briefly mentioned it at the start of the game, but there are very little teams in South America that can beat Infamous in the early game. Yeah. Because they are uh, they are very talented in winning their lanes. Well, I guess uh, just get yourself some Megas. Walk up the high ground. Still has the Aegis for about a minute. Oh, he's got the Shard. I love the Shard on Lesh. It is so good. Look at that big fat circle. Sexy yeah. fat, summon your creeps, go in there. <laughs> Benny oh, just baby. gets one shot almost by Sacred. And there's the Nether Strike from Michael. Walks away. Serum's gonna die from just the flat cannon damage. Another split of Sun onto Mini, and the GG gets called. Not too surprisingly, they lose themselves game number one because this was a very one sided affair. And it's also one of the things that Michael builds. I've seen a lot on Timber Saws lately. Blink Dagger Timber Saw. A lot of them go for that. I love it. It's weird, but it still does a lot of work. Yeah, especially because we've seen how much damage he was able to do to Luna. He almost one-shot her. So, it's a good explanation why he went for that. We could see, uh, like, the theory being put into practice, right? And it really worked so well. Yeah, you just Free Timber game. 12-08 on Sacred. I mean, this is just a... Uh, yeah, to be fair, that Timbers pick. That, like, the moment you saw the lineup, and of course, they also know, as you know, that Serum in that situation would always play the Tide Hunter because otherwise their lanes would be absolutely atrocious. And then you're like, oh, what hero does not fear anything that they've thrown at them? Uh, or anything that they can throw at him afterwards either with a couple of bands. Yeah, the Timber saw, he just goes out. But to be fair... The gyrocopter destroyed his lane as well. He was massively ahead. Alone actually did have a decent mid lane against Mini, but, you know, it just had a terrible uh, post laning stage situation. But that's not enough for Apple King of Kings to knock down Infamous, who are one of the uh, well, most impressive teams in the South American region right now. But that's only the first game.
We're going towards a short little break until game two starts. Hopefully, that one will be a lot closer. Hopefully.
10 seconds. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. More Bitzler Cup brought to you by, of course, Bitzler. Uh, obviously. <laughs> My name is DK Truman, and I am joined once again by Estini for game two between Infamous and Apu, King of Kings. And the first picks have been made. We see a decent amount of the same right now. Yeah, but the sides, they, they are different, right? So, Apo Kings, they're playing with the support duo that we've seen for Infamous last game. And Infamous again with the last track. The Mars can be a position 5. Have this in mind. It's South American Dota. They love to play Weird Heroes as position 5. Spirit Breaker can be 3, especially if you go for it's like radiant. Green Stroke or something like this. Even they can play Bane 4 and decide to go uh, for another position 5 and something that has changed is that King that of Kings they have me. last pick now so they maybe can draft better lanes if that's their playstyle win lane win game uh, that's what I would expect they already know Lash is mid because it's not very common that Sacred or Lumiere plays the hero so Ten they should seconds. be looking for a good matchup against Lash mid Unfortunately, Invoker's banned, because that's the first hero that comes to my mind when I think about Lash Track. I just get the Pugna. The old classic Puggy, Puggy, Pugna. They're not going to get it because no one plays Pugna. But <laughs> there's OD, Razor, Lina. Oh, the, okay. that looks like an offlane spirit. Well, it could possibly be an offlane snapfire. There's also the chance that it's a mid snapfire, but that's more a Chinese thing uh, than a South American thing. Not that I think the Chinese have ran it in quite some time, but I just always remember nothing Ten to say. Seconds. Played it a ton back in uh, the beginning of this patch. I mean, this Five patch seconds. has been going on for way too long. Uh, luckily enough, in a couple of weeks, we will be on towards the next stage of Dota. Can't wait to see what we'll uh, witness there, but right now, Infamous, Ogre Magi, that should be normally a 5. I have seen some 4s. Yeah. Well, like, I don't get so much the Snapfire, even though I see it works well uh, with Spirit Breaker on the lane, uh, with the cool key, but... Seconds. I don't know, you've seen the mid laner of the other team, but you haven't seen the safe five laner or the position left. 5, so... Why? If you play two in lanes, they have a playstyle that doesn't match their draft. That's the, the issue that I see here. Uh, on the other side, Infamous seems pretty well. Ogre Magi, Bloodlust is super good for Lash. Even though the hero does not uh, benefit from attack speed uh, really well, the move speed is so great on Lash. You love move speed, so there's another side that usually you don't consider from Bloodlust. Extremely good uh, for Lash Wreck. That's uh, pretty interesting to add. There is my favorite hero right now, Coddle. I love Coddle so much. It is so much fun to play. No matter what position you stand, you just get yourself that... Well, no, I get myself that quick axe because I'm very greedy. But it's always so much value when you finally get it up. But yeah, it's a great hero. However, um... Most of the time, lackluster in the laning stage because you auto push the lanes. <laughs> like that's one of the big downsides of the hero. I do love the combo Maybe against the Spirit Breaker. He charges away. You hit him with the Binding Light, and he just you see him slowly walking slower, and then all of a sudden he can't move anymore. And then you have a charging Barra that can't move away from the position that he was in. Which is yeah, good. you have the you have the Solar Bind. Which is the basic spell, and you have the Blighting Light, which also is good against the charge itself if it's going to your direction. But then that's like embedded ultimate spell. But still, the hero is super good against Barra. It's extremely good with Lash. I was mentioning in the past game that they didn't really have a hero to play together with Lash. Even though the Spirit Breaker was free to play any lane, it doesn't really match the Lash playstyle. But Keeper of the Light Ten definitely seconds. does. Having that extra mana pool or that uh, mana regen Five is so left. great for Lash Rack. That's what the hero is about. You don't have any cooldowns. So as soon as you have mana, you are ready to fight again and again. Up King of Kings, they go with a hero that can jump into the Keeper of the Light. Uh, Void Spirit, really 
good against the hero. That's also, I guess, why you mentioned you hate uh, Invis heroes. You mostly hate, I guess, every hero that can jump a Keeper of the Light, right? Mm -hmm. And like <laughs> Ricky, Nyx, like those heroes that just come from nowhere and suddenly are dead. So if you are able to get close to Keeper of the Light, he's dead. And Void Spirit does that really, really well. And they'll be lacking a uh, safe laner, King of Kings. They still have the Wraith King. Pretty decent against Lash. Uh, quite kiteable against those heroes. He really needs a BKB, but could be the choice of Apu King of Kings. But Timber is still open. The question is, are they going to ban Timber Ten now? Seconds. Or... Okay. Uh, they really... Wow, like, seconds. Infamous, they need a hard carry, right? So, no reason to, to ban Timber. Unless they would pull like Lash Carry, which is I, I don't think is the case for Infamous. So... Abu definitely need to be careful here, because it looks like it's gonna be a Coddle Mars lane. And that is a lot of magic damage harass. Uh like a stupid amount. So you need to find a hero that can survive that. And you know, the first that comes to mind for me would be either you go like a juggernaut. Uh which is pretty okay with the bane, and you've got heals, you can you know, dodge magic damage and whatnot that comes your way, or maybe a life sealer. You know, because if you get like a you know a normal Ursa, for instance, you get those blasts coming in from the side. You get the spear, then the Kado gives mana back to the Mars. You get the second spear, and all of a sudden yeah. you're just completely badgered by spells. And Bane can't yeah. handle that those two off laners. That's true. Or you can go something like Anti Mage. If you feel like you could play to the late game. And it's like, it seems like a free anti-mage game. The thing is, can you last enough for that hero to come online? I actually would have liked to see the anti-mage as well. It would have been great against Lash Coddle. Uh, Luna even. Yeah. But the standard is what you mentioned. It's either Lifestealer or Jugger. You want that innate uh, BKB. So, yeah, if you are born with a, with a BKB, you don't need to buy one, usually, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're against some silences and you still need it. I don't think it's going to be the case at this game. But, yeah, that's the most common one, especially if you're drafting uh, lane phase oriented, early game oriented. That's the play style of Apu King of Kings. So, makes more sense. Also, Life Stealer, he can enter... Is that a right expression? Because Infest. translating, it sounds it sounds weird, but like he can enter inside Void Spirit? Uh, it, the spell is called Infest, I think. He can inf okay, he can infest Void Spirit yeah. and then jump at a target. Okay. Uh, translating it sounded a bit weird. Yeah, luckily in the Netherlands, I think no one has the game on Dutch. <laughs> I know you can, but I've one time read it and it's not fun. <laughs> the words okay. are just horrible to read. But yeah, um, Life Sealer is solid. Works well with Spirit Breaker and the Void Spirit. Later mm -hmm. on, Snapfire should get that axe just because it's fun. Um, but yeah, we do get to see the Ogre skin here for Affliction. The Fatty Boom Boom Jakiro skin. Which is so good. I mean, I rave about it every single time I see it, but it is so good. Did you buy any any cash? I have still not bought any <laughs> cash sets. I am very much planning to. Okay. Yeah. I did vote for it though when they had that cash voting system thing. I also did. I'm excited to have them, but I didn't buy any. Still, like <laughs> I'm holding my wallet. Like, oh, am I gonna do this again? And of course I will on the very last day, when I will regret not having doing it earlier. Have done it earlier, but yeah. Yeah, I'm going to buy it and then realize I never play Ogre because I hate the, how boring the hero is. And then, okay. Yep, that was a, I, that was a mistake. <laughs> I wanted the AA with a book at his hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know that skin. Uh, also a hero. I, like, my heroes mainly are... I've got three heroes. Winter Wyvern, Rubik, and Coddle. And... Most of them I play as a position 5, so the amount of greed that I run as a support is most of the time too much for my boars to handle, but Serum looks like he's very much dead. With Affliction walking uh, in, it's got that Ignite slow. It's actually going for the Fire Blast. 
not towards sacred he runs and that will be first blood for michael on the coddle who went for tango's brown boots level one I'm so used to see Apu Kings playing Radiant that I thought it was his ward and that he was safe. I'm glad I didn't talk. But like, I think from 20 matches of Apu Kings, I've seen like one dire. So, it's pretty interesting. I actually to see that had, too. I can't really, I, I think it was Hokori actually that I casted in the playoffs where there was this moment where there were three heroes on the dire high ground towards mid. And they, they were waiting for a move. I think it was against Infamous for a loan to walk up. And he was just standing there because in the meantime, there was a high ground ward from the Radiant there. So they, the Radiant saw everything. They were just waiting for them. And they was okay, we'll, we'll kill you. And they walk up, killed <laughs> the entire team. It was actually the dumbest fight I've ever seen. Just walking straight, <laughs> thinking they have no vision here. They could never have a ward here. Oh, sometimes you just you see. Teams I hope make you mistakes. you didn't blame the coach. Oh, 100 percent. Every everything that always goes wrong is always the coach's fault. And football as well. If a team sucks, it's the coach's fault. That's why they're always the first one to get booted. Ooh. Oh, mini. Oh boy. Well, the tips come out immediately as well. That's painful. As is Michael's yeah. blast in the top lane. You you didn't ask for a prediction this game. I don't know if it's oh, too late. I, I to assume it, you're but... ex say, gonna say him. <laughs> yeah, just from what I've seen first game, they were totally outclassed uh, on Apple Kings, and uh, I don't know, just made me believe in Famous like one tier ahead of Apple Kings level. I I think like Apple Kings with any draft, they would have so much trouble to beat Infamous. That's at least my feeling. I know it's like somehow wrong to have this impression just by one game. Sometimes you're like not warmed up. Uh, happens that you have like a bad game or a bad day. But my feeling with that match was this one that they were, they seemed totally lost. Meanwhile, Infamous, they had a game plan. Uh, though Infamous, they, they did look good uh, yesterday to a reasonable degree. But uh, definitely against Lava, they also struggled. In a couple of the games, especially the third game, they just got completely one-sidedly stomped. So, uh, they're not 100% the uh, the biggest name that's uh, in my mind to win the entire tournament. So definitely looking like they're very viable to at least make it towards the grand finals to take on Lava again. And so far, Infamous, they've been winning the three lanes, at least. Mm. It's actually fast Winning struggling. two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, three as well, because you got that first blood onto minion mid. You're almost a full level ahead as well. Or, well, half a level ahead. Still a lot of experience ahead. I'll take that. Yeah, and just interesting to see that Sexy Fat is actually the Spirit Breaker and Hana is the Snapfire because it's very common to see Sexy Fat playing Snap position 3. I'm wondering like what makes them to see like okay it's a good Pyro game but not such a good Snapfire game because I think it's a better Snapfire game than a Pyro game because Pyro is countered by Kotto uh, as you mentioned with the Solar Bind and the Biting Light, uh, also not so good against Mars because you can be speared. Uh, if he uses Arena, you can't do anything because the hero, you just want to move as a Spirit Breaker and if you can't move, you kind of useless. And he has to run. In the meantime, Malone gets also a little bit of that mana buff from Michael, who walks by. Always uh, nice as a mid laner to just get your mana rebuffed. Of course, it is only level 1, so it's not the greatest. But it's... Uh, at least it's something. Sacred as well. Is still looking to go for the Soul Ring regardless. Because uh, Kato can't always be next to him. Definitely does help with the Illuminate Blast Bam now as well. It's a level 2. Benny takes a heap of damage, but it is a lifestealer. Didn't even level a point in Rage. 
Because the harass was not strong enough to really push him out. He just tries to heal up with the feast level 2. Mm. Is it worth? I think so. I I mean, he hasn't died and he's actually surviving the lane pretty nicely. Oh, mini. Okay, two TPs. Oh, he's oh, actually going no, in on Sarah. Oh, one gets cancelled oh, as well. Boy. And Mini is now dead. <laughs> oh, boy. They just... Okay. Did he get... How did... Did Hansus get in? He must have been interrupted by, like, Lumiere with a Lucent Bean or something. Because he just baited his team hard with those DPs. I mean, or maybe he thought it was, like, enough. Like, okay, he's already going back. I, I don't need to join that skirmish. I'm fine here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, that, it feels bad. That is definitely a very big feels bad moment. Mini uh, is uh, still trying to get himself to level 6. Alone is almost level 7. That's a huge disparity in the mid lane matchup. Serum walking in, but Mini takes a lot of damage. Nightmare will at least keep him at bay. Drains all his mana, so that's a nice plus. Alone still chasing it after Mini, just... <laughs> Bye. I had a terrible game last game. Now I feel indestructible. Michael coming in with the level 2 chakra magic. Gives uh, back that mana to the Lesh. Even gives him... Well, I think he popped his own clarity. But Mini being chased in the trees. Dissimilate. Actually dissimilates right into Michael's Illuminate. Not necessarily the best place to do that. But the T1 tower in mid is looking to be the main target here. It's fun that both teams, they have the same playstyle, so it's like this six hero sitting at mid lane all matches. And again, like the team that wins that skirmish is the one that's most likely gonna win the game. And Infamous is leading by so much on that. Mini is still not level six. Walk of shame to the lane. Might, I'll not say lose the tower because they managed to kill the catapult at least, but it's a lash. So next nice Diabolic Addict. Might fall. That's a tough one. Michael just farming up creeps as a real coddle should do. You're pretty much just a jungle hero at this point. Tower gets taken down. Hans is on the run. Does have a cookie to try and disengage. Eighth round and holds at least alone at bay. Oh, Hans is. Uh, would I don't think have been enough. Actually, probably would have been enough. If it did manage to get the full duration connection, but not having the range is a bit unfortunate. Even wounding the creep so that it alone can uh, mow down that big juicy stack a lot quicker. And now he goes for the hood. Perfect. Now he builds according to his playstyle, and this is gonna make him think so much more. Uh, eight minute rune. Looking for Saren here. Luckily to Mini, he's gonna have Arcane. No! Well, that is a uh, pretty decently farmed Lash, but on the side lane, Sacred. Uh, he's currently handling top solo because Benny is looking to farm the jungle a little bit more. Doesn't really want to stay anywhere close considering, uh, well. The tower tier, tier 1 tower top is going to get pulled down bottom lane. They're trying to do the same thing that direction. But a nightmare onto Lumiere charge comes in. And is actually going to be able to get himself back to reasonable greed. Interrupts and Bada. We'll get nether struck though. But there's alone. Cookie forward. Thank you very much for bringing me all these juicy kills. The Lesh says. Serum's going to die. Lumiere should be able to be the one to get the kill. Hello. Finish him off. Thank you. And it is Serum that in the end dies because the cookie done goofed him. Yeah, and he's still level 3 and Snapfire level 4. So one of them is going to take so much time to hit level 6. Which again is bad because of the playstyle of the team. They want to team fight all the time. If you don't have 6 on your support, it's going to be super hard to do it. Currently, look at that, Michael. He's uh, just barely behind Sexy Fat's net worth. Gonna go for the Spirit Vessel Rush. This game... I mean, it's an item. It's not, like, superb. One, two, three. But it, I guess it gets the job done, especially with the amount of aggression that these teams are showing. Affliction's gonna get charged. 
and will be dying, which... Will he? Okay, yes, he will. In comes the jump, but the nightmare keeps alone at bay. He's still running forward. He's not the fastest hero in the world. And Mini does have a disengage with the Dissimulate, of course. It will be just fine. They get a kill. And they're pretty happy about that one. Yeah, and Hane, he stole the DD rune, which is very meaningful at that point of the game, because... Lash, you just want to be full resources all the time, and the rune helps him so much. <laughs> well, Lumiere almost done with the, of course, the standard. Mask of Madness Dragon lands, Arenor's you, sexy fat! It looked like that should have hit and killed him, but the spear in the end does the job, meaning no spells left. Does have a astral step, but the stun lock is too much to handle, and that's another one in the bag for Infamous. 8-1 ahead, and well, you know, they're just such a good early game team. It's stupid how good Infamous' early game brawl is. Yeah, and it shows like how bad the game is for Saxifat that he just like charged through and he dies. He wasn't able to, as you mentioned last game, do anything. All he did was die. He's definitely not having a, a, a fun series so far. But there's still uh, room for recovery. 3k ahead is all they've got. They find a kill onto Sacred. Mortimus Kisses have been used. That does, of course, mean that the Bane is going to take a long time to get his level 6. That's why they're giving the top lane towards the Bane to solo farm it up. Get that experience because they really need the Fiend's Grip to try and find, make some plays. Because mo you're, you're pretty much expecting Luna's not going to join any fight anytime soon. Like, the Mier is just going to farm what he does best. While his team creates massive amounts of distractions, he's going to be miles ahead in net worth compared to anyone else in the game. Yeah, but I think he's going to join soon enough. Because he's farming so much. So I guess he's going to have like 15 minutes BKB even earlier. Especially by breaking down the dragon line so he can have the ogre access so that makes a very very early bkb and then they are ready to rush and snowball and what we expect from infamous here well uh mini trying to go for the kaya sanj which i mean of course it's one of the best value items in the game it just doesn't give you anything uh, it gives you sustain and, you know, status resistance, which is nice. But when it comes to most of these fights, you know, Yule Scepter is pretty nice to have. Or a way to silence your opponents or something in that regard. Benny chasing forward. He's actually looking for a fight. Fiend's Grip onto alone. They'll still do a lot of damage with the Pulse. Nova will be taken down by Mini. They finally managed to get themselves a kill. They're chasing for more. Benny's in trouble. Does get the Infest just barely before the Illuminate Blast hits. And will disengage inside Hanses. Sexy Fat running to the side. Mini with the multicast. Sexy Fat will eventually die. Mini to jump over the cliff. Actually goes back in aggressively. Benny jumping out. With the Mortimus Kisses coming in, this is a lot of damage. Lumiere joined the fight, and Lumiere is going to die. This is huge coming out from the side of Apu King of Kings. This is a disrespect from Infamous that gets punished hard. Yeah, very huge. Overextend, and it was interesting to see that. I also thought that Mini, he was going to run away, but then he just <laughs> goes <laughs> to the Luna, do some damage. Of course, he dies, but killing Luna was totally worth it for Apu Kings. And that gives some time for Benny to farm up the Lumiere dead. Plus, uh, I mean, the experience gain is also rather significant. Something that they were lacking behind severely. The oh, Lumiere is pretty fat. Like, <laughs> still yeah. 2k ahead of the enemy. Life sealer towards mid. Mini double asshole step. Still ticking to the ignite, but should just barely be able to survive. Way too close for comfort. Yeah, and alone he has a regen rune, so super fine to waste all the mana pool trying a kill. Oh, Michael oh. hits him with the max level illuminate blast. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it, Mini. Oh, no. <laughs> There's the slow, Sarah. 
Bye. Another one. Oh. Charge coming in from Sexy Fat. Going for the Ogre and immediately dips out. Because, uh, well, the Ogre, you know, 9 armor, 1280 HP. He's got himself the infused raindrops as well. Doesn't die quick. Yeah, this game is actually showing my point that I had on the previous game with Spirit Breaker that you can't play against a team that does 5 men as Spirit Breaker because you have no one to charge. Okay, he's charging Lumiere. Probably the best target that you can get. He does have BKB, but no. will get taken down before he gets his Eclipse off and that is a huge kill. Looking for more, they even catch Affliction on the side. Should be enough damage to charge from Sexy Fat. Wait, what? Okay, he's charging bottom. I thought, you know, they were looking for it to clean up and get everyone in the process. But okay, okay, I see how it is. Just charging to get some more creep kills. Still trying to finish up that Shadow Blade, of course. Yeah, a little bit of a misplay from Lumiere there, I'd say, because he just had his BKB on the core here, so... He should be playing more towards Roche, uh, playing five men with the team so he can get Aegis, but he just dies solo. Still, his game is super good. I guess he's just gonna like respawn, TP mid, smoke to Roche. That's what I expect from their team right now. I gotta get that Roche, gotta get the Aegis, and then just run everything down. Though there's definitely still a, a threat. I mean, Lifesteal is still a hero that's super. Again. Strange and dangerous and Lumiere, oh. yes indeed. He gets caught by a random fiend script because I you know, you kind of forget that that the enemy can still kill you. Like they have a bane, they have a bara. That one of the two needs to reach him, you're dead, and they find sacred as well. I don't know why they're still continuing the fight. They might catch Mini, but to simulate Astral Step, Astral Step does have to magic wand to stay alive. Michael is chasing him down, but won't be able to do much in the process. There's the charge from Sexy Fat. Mortimus Kisses alone is now dead. And Infamous, they're throwing away their entire net worth lead. Benny's just here to bump out some right clicks. Michael with the TP out to safety. But this was, um, I mean, Lumiere. I did, yeah, why is he here? As an analyst, I cannot answer this question, honestly. I, I don't know. It makes zero sense, but he might know something that I don't know about Dota 2 to be there, because, or maybe he was on a nonsense place, because they all dead right now, right? Uh, you know, it's trying to put up, you know, lift their spirits so that they can crush them even harder, because this is South American Dota. This is the. Advantage into throw into counter throw shenanigans coming in though sacred just walking up. What what why did he? Bro, why are you just randomly walking up the high ground? No vision. No nothing Affliction ogre match is gonna be next. I mean Benny has a deso armlet right now. This life sealer hurts like a truck In comes a bottom yeah. Now suddenly what was their timing became Apple King's timing I mean, we, we talked about it last game as well, right? Luna, solid hero for that early game farm, for the pushing coming through. But if you take a 1v1 fight against a life stealer, you are going to lose every single time. They need Roche and they need to start pushing out the map because yeah, I don't really think you want to take it late either. Yeah, they're gonna get the post, and I strongly believe they will Roche after it. That would be the clever move to finally make some good use of that BKB. So, as mentioned, like Lumiere had a great time on BKB. Uh, I'm not, I don't recall correctly, but might be like 14, 30, 15 minutes. But he two, still two deaths didn't get ago, to use it. you know, yeah. two deaths ago. But he hasn't used it yet, but two deaths ago. <laughs> And they want to force top, top tower before going Roche. Okay. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well, they are gonna group up to head out top. They've got the infest bomb ready. It's gonna get scanned out though, though they know. 
Mini jump in onto Affliction, try and mow him down, but the spear comes out. Mini is going to get taken down. Benny with the right click spam against Lumiere. No infest available. He's trying to run away, and now he's going to be the one taken care of. The charge from the barra comes in. Sexy fast like, I'm going to join the party way too late. And indeed, that is exactly the case. With the TP attempt from Hansus, Michael does not have a way to interrupt any TP shenanigans, and that is going to be the counter throw as previously mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, Infamous, even like with these two throws, they are still super strong at a team fight. That's what they should be doing since uh, Luna's BKB. Just get RS5. You're gonna win. Like against Bane, it's a hero most intended for a single target. Lifestealer, single target. Spirit Breaker, single target. So if you manage to play five or against five, you should win the fight. It's a. Uh... Into the pit they go, they got themselves one more outer tower to be secured, and then it's... Well, then, with this age, it's probably going to be high ground, because there's a nice group of creeps, plus a catapult, top lane. So that's exactly what uh, seems to be on their mind. Mid as well, a catapult, but Mini is quickly trying to clear up that wave. In the process. Age on Luna. Which he desperately needs, because, you know, um, yeah, it does have a tendency to walk out of no man's land. Mini stunned up. They have a way of saving his life. No, they do not, because Serum can't reach him with the nightmare. It's so fun to watch Infamous, because they were, like, from best execution in the world to worst execution in the world. Now they're just back to best execution ever. So fast. Yeah, they're, uh, it's like Lava, their series against Lava yesterday, it's up and down and up and down. <laughs> like, either like, they go completely, play insanely well, or they just go full dirt. But how do you stop this? It doesn't seem very likely. Blast comes in, he'll get secured. Michael on the coddle, he's 609. Like a Chad, but he's gonna get jumped and he's gonna get taken down. Benny with the right click. Fiends grip onto alone as well. That is huge. Mortimuscus has come in. Lumiere in trouble. That's gonna be the Aegis popped. Does have that BKB and even the Hurricane Pike Sacred. Uses himself to try and stay alive. Lumiere pops the BKB. Goes in with the Eclipse. Benny, no BKB. No Enrage. That's locked down. Benny, why don't you have Enrage? Why are you there if you don't have Enrage? Throw v counter throw. Oh, <laughs> that spike play was pretty. Oh, uh, does have buyback though. I, that looks so good for Apple King of Kings. So good for so long, and then just everything fell flat. Yeah, they managed to kill the last really fast. Mars, two cars gone. But then the Luna with the second life and BKB. They needed to better kite that BKB. They should be expecting it. They just got overconfident, I believe. I mean, you could Sexy handle the fat. BKB if the life sealer just had his rage. Like, he got yeah. the, he got killed by just Eclipse. How does that even work? Like, that, that's not something that a life sealer should ever die to. Sad way to go. But they only get themselves top set of racks. So in the end, it's not the worst. 9k behind, 23 minutes. Doable. It's recoverable. I mean, they we've definitely seen that they can win a fight. Especially if they take down the Coddle first. Yeah. So, Coddle did use buybacks. Snapfire also. And Bane also. So, three buybacks. Bending as of now. Bottom set of racks. It's probably what they're eyeing up, but it's a little bit scary. The speed that the Luna did manage to uh, did tend to die. He does have a double damage bottled up though, so I assume they still want to just try and push it out before Apple King of Kings get too strong. I mean that Iascari pickup on the life sealer will be very problematic for the Luna if he gets to that point. And just Oh, Spear comes out. I mean, he does not get stunned, but they have the Infest ready in the Void Spirit. Jump onto Lumiere. There's the damage. There's the kill. Yep, very easily, very quickly. Lumiere gets bursted down. There's no saves available. Affliction does not get stunned by the charge, but Sacred in the trees thinks he's immortal. Sexy Fat will be able to get the catch, and Sacred's going to be another one dead. Yeah, the Luna. 
Luna is not the, like they feed, they jumped him at the same time as they threw Mortimus kisses on him and fiend stripped him. Like they, he was just dead. Like they threw literally all yeah. of the spells on him. And sexy fat got alone, but I don't. He might be dead. No. Okay. You keep chasing. Michael's uh, nearby. Yeah, like Luna. He's playing like he has some cover, like an Oracle, and Dazzle, Abba, anything that could save him, and there's no saves. Like, not even like a Lotus Orb, uh, there is actually one Forest Staff, but that's not enough. And a Glimmer, and a Glimmer. Yeah, but if you're caught under a tier 3 tower with Fiend's Grip? <laughs> well, you get the magic re re damage reduction, which is like 45% magic resistance. Which is nice, but yeah, there, there was just a lot too much. And right now, Infamous, you know, that was their attempt at throwing the game. So now it looks like Apu's going to be back on. It's Apu time. Yep. <laughs> but <laughs> what can they do? <laughs> and Mini, I'd say he's close to his agony. 700 gold. That might mean one minute, one minute and a half. And that's... Uh, not like a good timing, meaning that he's gonna have it fast. Usually it's good to have by 22 minutes, but it's a timing they should use very well. Because it's extremely good item. Well, it looks like Ogre is gonna go for the uh, Lotus Orb as well. They're also building one on the Coddle, so they're building... Uh... Actually, no, Coddle's going towards Ags. My man, he knows what's up. He, he knows that Coddle always needs to get Ags. It's just too much value. Especially against Spear Breaker, because like he charges in and but then gets caught. Why? Smoke smoke. Why is Mini looking for a fight? He's 300 gold away yeah, from Agonies. Because uh, nice. Lumiere calls it. Sorry, uh, not Lumiere, but there's Serum getting caught. The Bane is dead. They're going in for the engagement. Mortimus is, is coming out alone. Does get right click down, but Benny needs to be careful. No infest, no rage, no nothing. The Eclipse again on top of him. Lumiere coming through with all the damage in the world's. And that is going to be a very unfortunate team fight. But, okay, Sexy Fat doesn't get taken down just yet. Still has the Charge of Darkness, which he'll do. Bye bye We'll be able to at least get himself out of there. But, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting choice of uh, not waiting for the Aghanim Scepter. Especially, in hindsight, as you look how clumped Infamous were for that fight. Sexy fat, he might die on the way? No, okay. He actually has the Yashakai at the moment. Oh, Lumiere again! My man, what are you doing? Gem gets dropped. And. Mini Agony. Yep. I mean, they're, they're so good at making mistakes. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know what to say. As an analyst, I, I, I'm like on that... I don't want to cross the line where I become toxic, you know? <gasps> like, by saying fun things. Yeah, I know. It's just... Yeah, it's not on. They're playing a little bit free roam, sexy fat with the charge coming through. I know exactly what you mean. I've been, I've been there. Met plenty of times, though. Sexy fat still gets taken down by alone. Mini wants to get aggressive. Ogre's not nice, necessarily the most fun target to take down. But yeah, the, I honestly, the plus side is this game is completely open for anyone to take it. Like, yeah. One good team fight where things go perfectly, where you get the items that you've been farming for so long, just in the nick of time, where you have the bay not being the one in the front, and they can definitely set it up on the side of uh, Apple King of Kings or on the side of Infamous for that matter, because all they need is pretty much uh, Lumiere to survive until the rage of the life seal ends hit that eclipse and most of the time then he dies who is going for a bkb because he knows exactly what's going wrong this game on the life stealer not enough magic resistance <laughs> yeah that's what i mentioned sometimes you need the bkb even with those bkb heroes yeah makes sense to be honest and what doesn't make sense, going back, is starting a team fight, 300 gold away from Agonies, and then pushing high ground without BKB as a Luna. So, again, 
that's where I come back to the first point I made at the beginning of the series. I'm still somehow disappointed with our region when it comes like to decision if you should take a team fight or not because there isn't this decision. It's like there is a team fight, I'm taking it. They don't see the option of not taking it. Like, okay, infamous, there's smoked. What about if you kite that smoke and you just fight 30 seconds later when you have agony? That's what I would love to see a team showing up that patience, because they know how to play Dota 2, that's the point. But they just run out of patience. They, like, need to meditate more, I don't know. Relax, take it easy. Oof. I don't really like the fire shield on Ogre. Never have. <laughs> I mean, it's good, especially against certain heroes, but... This feels so weird. Mini gonna get caught, blasted as well, taking down the charge from Sexy Fat, going for Michael, trying to get the kill onto the Coddle. Yurina gets dropped, Mortimus Kiss is coming in, the Fiend's Grip holding alone in place, and alone will be finished off. Does have a buyback available, Mini will actually be buying back because Lumiere, well, he was the main target for Benny here. He popped his BKB, it's about to end, he's got the rage in two seconds, can he get it off in time? Benny does pop his rage, can turn his attention to Lumiere. Life still back, all that HP, and this is where you see the Luna really struggling in a man fight against any other core in the game, because Benny, it's a life stealer just going ham. Can he stay alive? The spear comes out. Yes, he will be just Gucci, or will he? No, actually, in the end, it is going to be Benny taking down Sacred. Clift himself, hitting himself with the Clift Easy. Still stuck in that direction, jumping all over it is Mini trying to go for Michael, but now he's going to get stunned up by a long... The Nightmare save! Mini, can he get away? No, no spells available. Sexy Fat Charge, Bash. Kill secured. And now alone is going to be able to get rid of Serum. Sexy Fat's trying to just mainly be a distraction. Tons of buybacks being thrown out. And Sexy Fat's going to be able to disengage with a quick TP out to safety. But yeah. what a uh, very wild fight. If you look at fight recap, it shows it was actually good for Infamous, but... Yeah, I guess it's gonna be because Roche is up and Luna died first, so Luna comes back first. And of course, Slash can take some racks, but I would be extremely afraid because you're playing against a Spirit Breaker. Uh, any hero might have buyback. No, he has the info that Void Spirit doesn't, and Bane doesn't. But like, we know Life Stealer doesn't, but Life Stealer could have. So, that's dangerous. It's a... Uh, always a threatening situation. I mean, to be fair, with the two of them, they probably could have killed the Lesh as well. You know, charge him up, hit him with the Mortimus Kisses. He doesn't have a BKP yeah. yet on the loan. So all of his survivability would be the Hood of Defiance and the Yules. Sacred couldn't help him that much in that situation. But into the pit they go to get that shard secured. And that should be an easy hey, pickup we can, we can unless you. they smoke up in time. No, they're never going to be in, able to get there in time. It's interesting to see that Luna realized that her magical burst is what actually is killing the enemy team. And he's doing like agony against a life stealer that has BKB. So it's so much about that magic damage. Especially if you get that level 25 talent with the lo Eclipse loose and mini stun. Because in a 1v1 fight, right clicking, you just can't kill Benny. Uh, you saw Benny was at like 200 HP, pops his rage, and just keeps life stealing as much damage as Slim Gear does to him. Yeah. Although I think MKB could be useful, but he already went for Lincoln, so no damage item. Then it makes sense that you go just full magical. Gonna have to time it correctly though, because it's gonna be pretty tough with the rage into, uh, into of course the BKB, and he's almost got himself the uh, level 25 talent of, of course, uh, extra rage duration. Mini smoke, your life stealer inside, looking for lash. Lone would be a very nice catch. He's very close to finishing up the A on disc. Or oh, Michael is in smoked up alone. That's the only one that they can really spot currently. Oh, this is so scary. They're right behind them as well. Ring around the rosy plays coming through. Sacred jumping in, but there's the signs immediately. He uses himself up before he gets taken down, but that's going to be a catch coming in for Mini, an easy one as well. Benny still, he pops his rage. 
Uh, sorry, the BKB going for the Lumiere. Right click fight. Lumiere is in trouble. That Aegis is going to get popped momentarily. Does have that second life available. Sexy Fat. They need to get rid of Michael because he's a very big nuisance in these engagements. But the Aegis at the very least got taken care of. And uh, they also did get rid of Sacred. Benny now nearby. Still has a rage. Does use it. It is going to get forced out though. So Lumiere can hit that Eclipse. On to Benny. He needs to disengage. But look at the damage coming up from Mini. He almost burst on Lumiere. Pops the BKB. Going in with the four staff. Benny gets annihilated by the magic damage. And they find themselves sexy fat as well. Mini. Disseminate in a second. Split Earth on top. And Mini is going to die again. It looks like it will actually be infamous. Securing it. Indeed, the GG gets called. And it is going to be infamous. Going on towards the grand finals. Where they're going to be taking on Lava again. It was looking good for Apple Kings now when they took one life away of Luna, they killed Mars, but then the decision of going back as life stealer without having BKB, that was really a risk that they should not take and end up costing the game, but yeah, they were already very, very far behind. Yeah, quickly gonna check the uh, uh, breakdown because I'm curious. Luna did to the life stealer a total. Yeah, if you look at the phys attack damage compared to loosen beam damage, um, yeah, <laughs> he almost did twice as much damage with magic damage to the life stealer than with physical damage. That game, so uh, not having the most fun in that regard of the right click luna but they did manage to win it out in the end i mean very interesting game at the very least but uh it, yeah a couple of mistakes here and there as you mentioned that last team fight they got they popped the ages they got the kill onto sacred at that moment i would have also just expect them to walk away just walk back towards their base. Wait for their cooldowns to come back up so you can re reinitiate. Because they're mo they're, the way they won any fights was Mini, Benny inside Mini. They jump someone, they burst them down, and then they focus on the rest of the fight or they disengage. But yeah, they tried to take on a full 5v5 engagement. <laughs> Look at the amount of team fight magic damage Infamous have. Not easy, not great. In the end, Apple King of Kings still, well, everyone is at home, but they'll stay home. Uh, they'll get eliminated third place. We'll at least get a grand for their troubles. The 1k in the bag, always a nice addition, but infamous in the grand finals. Rematch against Lava. And well, we have about an hour and 50 minutes until the next game will be played. So, Astini, do you have any closing words for now? Mm, congratulations for Infamous on the win. Uh, congratulations for King of Kings on their run, finishing third place. Not bad, and good luck for them in the future. Maybe fix that a break on their, the car they're driving, because they're just driving a car with no brakes. They see a team fight, they fight, 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 fight. Maybe just take some deep breath, chill a little, that they're going to be an amazing team. I, I trust they might be on the, the right path. I see, like, they changed Valky for Sexy Fat, and, like, at first glance, they're doing worse. Uh, hopefully it's because like when you change players you have some trouble adapting but uh, hopefully on the long term that's gonna mean they will become a better team but so far I'm I'm struggling to see them playing like on on a right pace of the other two but of course that big test will be uh shown at the mini major where Apple King of Kings of course will be taking on infamous again uh, so uh that's where, you know, the teams will bring their A game. Of course, they tried as well here, but, you know, there, there's a there's a difference when the price pool is uh, 10 times as much. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, uh, deep sea points are on the line, so everyone's got their dream in the mind at TI already. But we'll be going towards a break. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed the show, and hopefully we'll be seeing you in give or take an hour for the finals of the Bitzler Cup.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for some more Bitzler action. We've got ourselves the grand finals. Indeed, it's going to be Lava taking on Infamous, the rematch of the winner's bracket match last night, which was, of course, a, uh, well, a very up and down combat between the two teams. My name is Dika Truman, and I'm once again joined by the genius from South America, Astini. Thank you very much for joining me. Hello, hello. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, the rematch, the last one, it was 2-1 for Lava. Uh, the last two matches, a bit of similar drafts, opening uh, with Weaver from Infamous, a Spirit Breaker from Lava. Let's see if we have uh, the same ideas here or if they want to change something up and maybe develop new strategies for the upcoming Major and so on. I uh, will uh, get to see, of course, uh, what these teams are going to be picking up. I would assume that they're definitely going to be taking these matches uh, fairly serious, considering first place is 10 grand, second place is 4 grand. That is a difference of 6 grand. That's about a bit more than a thousand bucks per player that you would be missing out if you lose this match. So I would definitely bring your A game, of course. Uh, from these two teams, Infamous is actually playing at the mini major. So, th you know, the in the back of their minds, they're like, we don't want to show everything. Lava don't really have that problem. Um, the next DPC season is going to be after the patch. The entire meta is going to be different. Everything's going to be different. You might as well just throw every last little strat you have right here, right now. Because that is very crucial indeed. And as you can hear on the background, the draft is starting. So we'll be heading in towards that screen momentarily. It's Dyer's band now. Yeah, for for a second, I, I forgot that fact that Lava is not playing. I was answering the players on the lobby telling me to not be rough on them. I, I didn't get exactly what they mean with that, but yeah. Uh, so Lava, they don't have that excuse of uh, hiding strategies, right? They, they can go all in uh, into winning the tournament. Infamous, on the other hand, maybe they are testing strategies or hiding something from the Major, of course. If you're playing a major in 10 days, your priority uh, is there. Even though you're playing a final right now, you're ready with your mind. Uh, if you can develop a new strategy, if you maybe hide your new strategy. And they open with Weaver, which was the opening from Infamous, the last two matches. And Lava, on the other hand, had the Spirit Breaker, but this time it's banned. So Infamous cannot go the same way. Uh, and seconds. they also managed to make sure that like two very comfort picks of the side of uh, Infamous are taken care of. No Bane, no Lashrak, because we did see two games of Lashrak from Alone in the previous series as well. Ogre, Weaver, okay, what are we expecting? Uh, a Quap still available to be picked up right here? But yeah. They've played a lot of Mirana, so they can go like with two supports. Ogre, uh, I'll not say it's a proper setup for the arrow, but it's decent with Mirana, if they want to go with the support duo. Uh, from the other comfort heroes, mostly are banned, right? Uh, the Lash, the Bane, and also they banned Mars themselves. Okay, uh, that is... Well, the Snapfire, always a solid hero, has a lot of damage, plus uh, can, of course, get rid of some nasty uh, problems, jump over... Well, there is no Mars, but in that case, over Arena, you can dodge certain spells. And just in general, it does have, especially if you get the Blink Shard, you have a pretty nasty stun. Armor reduction, so combined with the Ogre Magi, pushing power is strong. Roshan is very strong. It's a well-rounded hero in that regard. And there's the Queen of Pain, which I definitely did expect to get picked up at the very least. It's weird that they leave the Queen of Pain open for Lava, right? Most teams have been banning the hero. It's one of Leo's style favorites. Of course, you can still play the hero as three, as hard carry at this meta, but it's usually Leo's style hero because this hero is not losing any lane. Of course, you have the game counters such as Buck. I think it would be banned. Uh, Kanka, Legion Commander. Uh, Kanka already banned. But... So Lava, I'd say, has the upper hand uh, as of now in the draft, but that's what you expect from first pick, that you have the upper hand at this uh, first third of the draft, where you have the last choice. 
But then Infamous, they will have uh, two answer picks now, Five and they can left. turn the table around here. And so, of course, a little bit of a game of chess. And, uh, I mean, will we get to see something interesting from the Infamous side? It is actually yeah. just strange thinking about the fact that this is probably the last time you're going to see Lava before the big patch comes. Before the entire meta changes. This is the it's last series game. that they should be playing, I think. I don't know... I don't think that they played in the other tournament that was running in South America right now. I can't even remember the name. APU League. That. No, they're not playing APU. Yeah. yeah. So then this is probably their last showing before uh, the entire patch changes. All the heroes get uh, reworked. The entire map probably even changes. So uh, a completely different version of Dota. Probably neutral items added in. You get Marcy. <laughs> My god, you're gonna get Marcy. I, I honestly oh. think Marcy is like first pick material every time the way she is right now. Yeah. And I don't know, it must be a mixed feeling from Lava yeah, because they the must have hated the patch. They had like the 0 16 score at TI. They had a really rough start on DPC. But seemed like they were getting on a good understanding of the patch now. That is ending, right? They are showing a good performance at Beatsler. Yeah, they also game. showed some good performance, let's say, at the second half of DPC. So we had the break and December, January, they were back looking like a new team playing uh, a high level of Dota. So they might have Radiant mixed feelings game. about it, right? Puck. And here's the Puck, which was not banned. Yep, uh, of course, one of the strongest counters to the co-op in the laning stage in general, and also afterwards, because instantaneous silence, Dream Call, very good against both the Weaver and the Puck. So, uh, uh, yeah, definitely a solid Puck choice. Snapfire, you know, you catch people inside the uh, coil, Snapfire hits them up with uh, some kisses from beyond, and that is a lot of damage coming out from the infamous side. Like, they have control, they have damage, they have push, they have roach, they have... A ton of stuff that they can work with, buffs, slightly uh, slight saves. Their, their lineup so far is very well rounded and okay. LC picked up. I mean, Frank's Beastmaster did get banned, and like nine out of ten times he plays Beastmaster, and then the rest yeah. he uh, he has to fill with heroes like the LC. <laughs> yeah, but regarding the book, I'm pretty that sure that they knew. It was the best option for Infamous, but they had something in mind. As you can see, the Nyx, probably they had in mind picking this hero. That's why they let it through. It's not like that they, they've they done this mistake or they forgot about the hero. I'm pretty sure Leo style, uh, he reminded like, hey guys, there is Puck. But probably they're like, okay, they go Puck. We have Nyx. We are doing pretty well against Puck. Let them pick it. So, with the Night Stalker. I'm getting pretty scared. Like, yes, I, I get your point. You know, you let the, the hero through and everything, and uh, you know that you're going to counter pick it. But with the Night Stalker added on top, this co-op game looks, starts to look a lot rougher. Ten Weaver seconds. game as well. I mean, Night Stalker is just one of those heroes if you don't completely, like, stomp him left. in the lane. Especially Sacred's Night Stalker. I've seen him play that hero a couple of times before. He somehow magically manages to make it towards the top net worth of his team every single time he picks an Ice Stalker, so that is not fun to play against. Yeah, and that gives some really good team fight, right? Because as Snapfire, of course, you need the, the stun, the area control, and you have this with Puck, but also you can use really well the vision that Night Stalker provides. So Night Stalker provides the vision that Pucks need to find a good coil, and with a good coil, you have so much damage coming from Snapfire, and you won't see the Queen of Pain, or the Legion, or any hero uh, from Lava Side building an early BKB. Of course, you have the Legion shard, but it might not be enough. And also, another point there is that of course, you can dispel any silence that comes from Puck, but you cannot dispel Night Stalker silence. So it's a very rough game for Queen of Pain and also Weaver, because those two heroes, they're extremely countered by two things. One is basically like controlling the, their movement and you get this with Coil. The second one is silence, which you get with Puck. You can dispel, of course, with Legion, but you also do get it with Night Stalker. And uh, it's definitely rough playing against the Night Stalker, especially your, I assume it's a Nyx 5, but it could also be a uh, Weaver 5 for that matter. But yeah, in general, the Night Stalker 
doesn't look like he's gonna have that rough of a lane unless they, well, they ban out the Ursa themselves, I was thinking, unless they pick up Ursa, then he has yeah. a rough lane, but uh, right now, I guess, what would you choose? Would you throw a monkey at the Night Soccer just to be able to win the lane? Mm, not really, but monkey is good here, not because of the lane, It's of course, the lane is good, but... It seems a nice game of monkey, right? Because as Buck, you want to have the hero stuck at some place. And if you're a monkey, you love to be stuck at the same place. Because you have that ring. Uh, Wraith King seems decent. TB seems... De but, oh. The problem is that support duo. Which makes almost all heroes seem weird. When you have like Weaver, Nyx. Like, it's you dying. don't have any reliable stun, of course, you have uh, Impale, but it's not really reliable. You don't have any save, you don't have any healing. Uh, none of them likes building Force Staff or Glimmer Cape, any support items. So, okay, Nyx, you can build Force Staff, but still weird. Yeah, here goes the Wraith King, which I think was the best pick. Uh, Bloodseeker can be good. Let's see would actually nice be pretty soccer. nice. Ten seconds. Yeah, it's not really a hero that Kotaro plays, I guess, Five but it's left. it's a good game for the hero, and Hector has been playing the hero, and if Hector has been playing the hero, every carry in the region should be watching the hero. So. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, if Hector plays a hero, doesn't mean that every... He plays a bad and safe lane. Don't tell me that the yeah. other save laners in the region are like, yeah, let's pick that one. No, no one's like, let's pick up a bad and safe lane. Yeah. Here goes the TB, I guess the best choice against Night Stalker. Still a rough but, game though. I mean, they yeah. have a lot of magic damage bursts on the infamous side. They've last pick as well. And uh, there are a lot of heroes that deal with the TB Ten pretty seconds. decently. Uh, even though, you know, LC is pretty A-OK, -okay. you did mention it in the previous series, PL is always a nice hero to uh, try and get. TB has problems locking him down. And in general, the Lava lineup has a lot of problems locking down A, PL, running around the team fight. Yeah, PL, Naga, they just have the Legion, which is decent against uh, Illusions and Unities, but I don't think it would be enough. So, could be interesting choice. Also, explain a bit the Ursa ban. Uh, good against Legion in the lane, good against TB in the game. Morphling is banned. Uh, there's Draw Ranger, and you have a melee position 5, so could make sense that they go for Draw here. Draw, PL. Any of these two are the ones that make more sense. There's also Faceless Void, because you have Snapfire, so. Just the fact that you have Snapfire, it always makes a great Faceless Void game. Yeah, uh, it is always, yeah, it is pretty decent in that regard. And the fact that they just have very little lockdown on the side of Lava. They've got the Nyx stun and the Legion Commander Duel, and that is all of their control. I mean, we've seen a lot of control lacking lineups uh, in the last couple of days. But Infamous look like a massive team fight lineup. How are they gonna? There are a decent amount of heroes, as you did mention. Um, I mean, a hero that you don't get to see that often. You could go like a troll warlord. That can still be a surprise factor. Yeah, troll and monkey would be the ultimate lane winners against Legion. It's a choice. Also, CK, those three heroes, they're extremely good against Legion in lane. But I don't think they have a decent game against the TB. Monkey King. Well, there's the monkey. It depends on the item build that you go for on the monkey, of course. You could always go for the old classic Chinese Battle Fury Aghanim Scepter, which is solid against the TB. But I assume he's just going to go uh, Milstrom kind of idea, Echo Milstrom sort of idea to deal with the TB, try and win in the mid game, deny any late game shenanigans. Uh, I mean, I really like the infamous lineup. Dream Coil from the Puck Holds Cement Place, and you've got the Monkey King with his uh, Wukong Command around it, Night Sock silencing everyone, Snapfire throwing fire upon fire, and those TB illusions do melt quickly with all that magic damage. Yeah, I think both drafts make some sense. Like, uh, <laughs> it's not like high level analysis to say that, but both, win both teams can win. Wow. But I can see like both strategies making sense. Like you have TB, of course, 
bad lane because you have Nyx. Uh, but once you hit, like, either... I don't think you need BKB because you're gonna have Legion Commander with the shard, but you hit that Skadi BKB timing, it's extremely good because then Infamous, they lack the damage uh, to kill the hero, and then you just, like, take all towers, no ball in the game, you don't lose any more team fights. On the other hand, Infamous, they can definitely snowball because Monkey King has amazing lane against the Legion Commander. Buck has decent lane against Cops, not like lane counter anymore because you can just like uh, skip Shadow Strike. You're going to trade farm, you're going to trade water runes, going to be even, but you can do a bit more with Coil. So they can win definitely two lanes. The Night Stalker one, they're going to lose at least until nighttime, but then you can have the Buck joining in and they can snowball. So that's how I see the game. It's like either Infamous snowballing and delaying a lot that uh, TB Scotty by controlling his triangle, uh, not allowing him to get the first Roche, uh, just putting a lot of map pressure. On the other hand, if Infamous do not put that pressure, Lava should have a easy TB game, especially with the Legion shard uh, covering him. Yeah, but you forget about one very crucial thing. What did we see in the previous series? Infamous not putting any aggression out. <laughs> I don't think that that's possible for them. They yeah. Are, they are the kings of SA aggression. Yeah, but I think Lava has a better macro game than King of Kings. They know, like, how to kite team fights. They know... Like Leo style, he's gonna know like, okay, I need, I actually need Kaya to take the next team fight. I need Kaya Sanjay for the next one. Uh, Nyx can like get information, break smokes. Weaver can do the same. So you can expect way more from that support duo on breaking smokes and avoiding team fights till TB gets his items. That's at least what I would expect uh, from a team like Lava that has played TI, uh, has already had uh, a good major, the what Singapore major, if I recall correctly. They're a great team, they just didn't find themselves on that meta, lost confidence, but they they know what they're doing. Uh, you did mention one very important aspect, and that's of course breaking smokes, and considering they have two invis heroes as their supports on lava, they can very easily break a smoke and disengage. But it gets very dicey if Infamous, for instance, would uh, decide to get an early like gem on Sacred. Uh, to give, be gifted to him, because at that point you can really close out the map from on the lava side. So I'm wondering if they're going to be able to uh, make a move like that, because the thing is as well, TB, massive cooldown hero. He needs his metamorphosis to really take a fight in the late game. And Infamous to have a decent lineup to just, you know, bait out the meta and run away. Night Stalker Puck, Monkey a little bit tougher uh, if he f starts to get hit, but the other two can easily run away from an engagement, which makes it very scary. I personally like the infamous Raft, and the fact, uh, I mean, I've been fairly severely impressed by them as well, but uh, I'm hoping for a close game. I mean, it is Leostal on the Quap, you did mention it, it is his comfort pick, and it is also probably the strongest hero in general in this batch. Yeah, as you can see, he's putting a lot of pressure into Alon. He even managed to get a Shadow Strike. They're gonna go for the trade. Very fire. Use. Oh. Okay. Alon used the orb back. For fun. <laughs> if he used it for forward, though, uh, Leo Style would have probably gone for the kill because Leo Style hit, still had a fairy fire. So, yeah, if he used it aggressively, the style would have gone in and that would have been the f end of the puck. Meta pop bottom, but Nyx missed the stun. That's what I was talking about, like that you kind of lack a uh, proper support duo for the TB to work perfectly. As a TB, you pop meta, you just need one stun to make sure you're gonna burst one hero with right click. And he doesn't have that stun. Of course, he has duo. But you don't really want to use a duo to get a kill with a meta. That's not how the heroes in game work. Michael taking a lot of damage. Shock and Blast coming in. Catch you. Chasing in after the snap fire. Does have him pill in three seconds. But he's not going to chase that far for the Michael kill. Michael, no regen left. 
Might have, yeah, he just got himself tangos and a healing self delivered, so he'll be just fine. So yeah, um, I, I never even discussed it. I mean, uh, you know my prediction. I'm thinking infamous. Are you gonna go with Lava or infamous on your prediction? That's a tough one. It's a lot about execution. I would say Lava. Okay. And my point is infamous. They are able to put up that pressure. Kotaro? No. Oh, okay. that cookie. The cookie of death, Kotaro will be able to walk away though. Nice armor, of course, on that hero. Yeah, I think they're able to put that pressure, remove uh, space from TB, but somewhere Sorry. in between they're gonna drop the ball. Like, they might have the advantage, I don't know, 6k, but then they do a really weird team fight when, I don't know, Sacred doesn't have ultimate and it's daytime, and then they just throw everything, and then you have a TB which is unstoppable at the late game. I really think like if this game reaches late game, it's on Kotaro hand, even without the stuns and so on. He's just like unkillable past 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Stay down. Sacred's got uh, very much uh, regen already used. Does have the healing salve and the clarity. But it's a, it's a tough lane for Infamous to sustain in the bottom lane, because Kachu is just bringing in the healing cells constantly to keep Kotaro healed up. Yeah, and King is gonna... Actually, he did not steal, but Puck saw him, so he guarantees two water runes for Leo style. That means a lot on that mid, mat mid matchup, so you can expect Leo style to win it. As he jumps into Alone. Okay. Alone doesn't have anything left. <laughs> like bottles empty, no other regen pieces, oh. taking a lot of damage. Should be just fine regardless. Yeah, Liu Style, he almost went for the jump. He like casted Blink and stopped uh, mid animation. That would be a dangerous move. But yeah, that's it. So Puck needs to go base because he didn't have the water rune. That means uh, Leo Star is gonna have the level 6 before, which means he is a bigger threat than, than the Puck. Well, currently, it is uh, looking like the lanes are going exceptionally well for the side of Lava. 1k net worth ahead. Not a single kill has been secured just yet. But the lanes that they're playing are just taking so much damage. Lumiere and Affliction as well, top lane, constantly having to send in regen to keep the uh, Monkey King alive. We've got that nasty Weaver just with the Shikuchi and uh, the Swarm Bugs being able to constantly pump out some harass damage. But yeah, no kills secured just yet. And Affliction needs to be careful because the bugs are out and Affliction monkey uh, Ogre might just be first blood and that should be the case. Frank right clicks him down and that is Lava having three lanes pretty much at the top and a great rotation in from Alone. Nice bound to strike on top and they find a quick return coming through. Alone gets himself actually one kill. The other one goes to the creeps. Yeah, so as I was... Okay, Leo Styles gonna kill Michael? No? Okay. Yeah, so basically, Puck has way more impact on side lanes than uh, a Queen of Pain, right? You can definitely secure those uh, double kills with Coil. Uh, Queen of Pain, even having a better lane, wasn't able to get any kill yet. Uh, Queen of Pain, Lumiere. Oh, yeah, Lumiere is very dead. Oh, bound to strike, never mind, gets back to full health, thanks to the power of Mischief, but he's got the bugs on him, taking away all of his armor. Lumiere needs to be careful. The jump in from Leo Style doesn't have the mana for Sonic Wave, could pop the Magic Wand if he wants to, but Affliction is just very slowly dying. Still, Lumiere being able to get that kill, okay. Go, oh my lord, I can't believe that he actually survives. That is... That's pretty nutty. <laughs> yeah, Leo Style could even have jumps, but I guess he's just like, <laughs> I saved my spells on not diving the guy, let him go. Doesn't matter, I killed the monkey, that's what matters here. He needs to go base or to buy like two salves or whatever to... Okay, another smoke. 
the hostile duel on... Okay. Oh, no duel on Frank yet. That's weird. They should wait. Yeah, but Sonic wave for the hostile. The Mia is going to get jumped. That would be a, a, die, a, a second death without a TP available. Which is, of course, terrible for Lumiere. Absolutely terrible. His lane is completely destroyed, and that should make it uh, so that kind of all three lanes are being won currently by Lava. Yeah, especially because you just pick the monkey to guarantee you're going to win the lane against Legion, and then suddenly you die on two rotations. But now they want Kotaro alone. Oh, nearby. Need to get the Dream Coil. They do get the connection. Nice Stalker ulti as well. Cookie stun. He's out of his meta. And will be a pickup coming in for a lone. Turn their attention to Kachu immediately. Try to help out his TP. But Kachu will get taken down because there's no running away from a Night Stalker with his ult on. Yeah, his meta was about to end. So, in that sense, not that bad. But on the other hand, he was 1 XP away from leveling up, and then he would have Sunder. <laughs> so, yeah. a bit unfortunate for Kotaro. Unfortunately, indeed. Though, the question is, even with the Sunder, would he have been able to survive against three heroes, especially once the Night Soccer came, joining in the fun. But yeah, the mid laners have both done a lot of work to secure the side lanes. Dyer's middle tower's in yeah, it's... Trouble. Pretty different game from the one we watched previously, right? That we would see six heroes at the mid lane, and now you see none because both uh, mid laners are looking to help their side lanes. Well, Kotaro not gonna be needing any help in the side lane anymore because he's just been relegated to the jungle, giving Kim on the Weaver full control over that bottom lane. He's just trying to get that Spirit Vassal, which is always nice to have, especially against the Monkey King, to screw up his Jingu Mastery stun shenanigans. He actually doesn't have a single point in Tree Dance, even, Lumiere. Yeah, he went the full winning lane, or not... Because when you are winning the lane, you go for the Tree Dance so you can get kills, right? But he went, like, the full, I need to stain against those heroes because we were just too strong at the lane. And he lost the cool here. Right. <laughs> it's not looking good. Found the strike, interrupts the TP towards mid. The Mortimer's kisses were already thrown out. Stun on Takachu. Nexus Aston doesn't have much left and he's gonna get taken down. But that's a great move from Lumiere. He jumps up to make sure that the TP gets cancelled. And Michael using that little shredder to quickly get rid of the pesky bug. Silence onto Kim. He just gets bursted down. Thought, you know, I, I got my time lapse. I'm immortal. No way when a silence is in play. But you see that Liu style is more cold blooded. Because he was thinking about jumping, but he saw, like, okay, Nyx broke the play. He died for me. And then Weaver goes, and he's still like, okay, you, you want to kill yourself, I'm not going there. So, a little bit more of discipline that uh, Apu Kings lacked on the last game. So, they know sometimes to give up objectives and not force every possible play. Oh. BP back towards mid. Leo Style, do they get the control? Yes, they do. Affliction gets taken down. And top lane, the Miyar going for the fight against Kotaro, but he heals back to full. Kotaro does not have the Sunder again. He's behind the tower. The Miyar gets kited, though. Oh my god, juked. But you can't really escape. No help coming in. And he's actually not going to go any deeper, thinking that some TPs might be coming through. Or that he has Sunder, right? Yeah, it's a very strange fight coming in. Kotaro, yeah, now Frank's here. Now you really can't go for the kill. But you're just wasting time. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, I, I, I guess he was spooked and got a little bit scared that he would get killed. But that you know, feels very unfortunate that you had such a good chance at just killing him. <laughs> but we know he doesn't have Sunder. Lumiere doesn't. Now you probably would have used Sunder in the trees already when he was like at yeah, yeah. 200 HP. But it's like, is, is that the ultimate bait? That now he's saving the point. Reflection, he's gonna get dueled in mid. In comes Sacred, doesn't have his crippling fear just yet. Puck needs to get a nice dream call. Only hits it on to catch you though. That is very unfortunate. Sacred very slowly right clicking Frank down. 
And with very slowly, I mean very slowly, but Frank eventually does get bursted down while... Wait, did somehow the freaking Nyx assassin actually survive? Lumiar still dies in the end, top lane. Sunder was, it seems, used by Kotaro. He's gonna stay alive in Come Sacred. This time he does have himself the Crippling Fear, but won't be chasing more because uh, his ultimate just ended. And it's a 3k net with lead for Lava, with Lumiere being dead a third time this game. And they go for Michael mid. He might be dead. He's dead. Yeah, that's the thing about the discipline that Lava has, right? They dive one hero to get a duo, but they immediately just run three heroes to opposite sides because they know it's not a team fight. So they either go for the Weaver or the Legion. They decide to go for the Legion. Weaver survives. Queen of Pain clearly survives. Gold stops. So they they don't like. So Infamous like, hey, come dance with me. And they're like, no, I don't want it right now. I want to farm. I want to hit my timings. And that's why they're managing to win against Infamous. Yeah, the discipline looking pretty solid. Monkey now has the Echo Saber done. going for, of course, the Milstrom. More fight-heavy build. And Michael and Alone roaming around looking for Kotaro, who has... Dodged death multiple times, but this might just be his last uh, escape from death considering they're right on his heels and should be able to find the real one once the smoke breaks. Yeah. There we go. Kiss is coming in. Dream Call wasn't even necessary because he just gets mowed down in half a second. Yeah. Maybe not even the Mortimer, right? <laughs> they, they just throw everything because they don't want to see the guy surviving again. Uh, a little bit scared with that Sunder, of course, in play. It's up in 10 seconds. Lumiere needs to be careful. There's have Affliction nearby. Jump away just barely, but Affliction. You know, the Ogre's just going to feed away some more dual victory damage. It happens. You're, at the moment, not as tanky as you'd like, especially not against uh, Leo Style, who is top net worth and honestly playing a very solid WAP game. Look at Kachu as well. Just a moving ward the entire time. Nice soccer LT coming through, looking for a catch. Really wants to make sure that that catch is going to be Leo Style. Wukong's command comes down. They have the silence on top, but Lumiere, that Wukong's does nothing because he doesn't have the boundless strike to hold him in place. And Dream Call was, of course, already used in the top lane to kill off the TB, so that one was also not there. And they just used Wukong's command. They used the Dark Ascension, and they gained nada. Yeah, and they're pretty happy to just run away. They don't want to re-engage here because they know the Terror Blade is farming. That's what they want, especially at nighttime. So the most time they can make infamous waste during nighttime is better. So they're not forcing those team fights. You see, again, Weaver scouting, getting information so Kotaro can farm uh, safer. You also have the Ogre here trying. Did he put a ward? No, just sentry. Trying to do ward then. He's gonna have absolutely nothing this game. Unless he goes, of course, for the best item in the game for Ogre, and that's a nice hand of Midas, but. Oh, doubtful. don't say that. It is the best, though. Oh, big Sonic Wave. Another dual victory for Frank. And they get rid of Michael. Looking for a chase onto Affliction as well. Run, Ogre, run! No way he can run from everything. Will get taken down in the end. Alone, nice dodge with the face shift, making sure he doesn't get stunned by the spike carapus. Like, that's, that, you know, that's a just experienced move there. Knowing exactly yeah. what can happen if he does not face shift. Yeah, but it's interesting to see that he goes for Sanji before Kaya. Like, that's kind of showing, hey, I'm really scared, this game. If you go first, I then Sanji as a puck. They might get Frank. They do. Oh, that is going to be Frank the tank no more. Sacred gets himself the kill. He's got the Echo as well on the nice soccer going for the blink. Immediate smoke out and smoke gets broken by Kachu. Oh, the dust. He walks a little bit too aggressively in towards his opponents. So they find a second, but that is the smoke tank, uh, smoke gank tank that you, uh, that we of course talked about. 
Yeah, and Kotar is gonna TP the other side of the map, so... Doesn't matter, he's happy that Nyx died for him. And as you can see, like, they have their creeps on, under the tier 2 tower mid lane from Infamous, so... Even though Infamous want to apply that pressure, they don't have the waves. Because King is doing an amazing job at splitting the map, getting that info, and that makes they just take their fights they want. It's 18 minutes rune, they didn't get it, unfortunately. Now looking for a continuation fight, Michael gets dueled. Those, the rest of the team is here as well. Jump comes in and it's not going to be a dual victory. Wukong's actually comes out and the is in trouble. And this is a little bit too aggressive coming out from Lava. Not expecting Infamous to have their entire lineup behind them. Kim trying to reach safety, but the Dream Cold will hold him down. And the Weaver will be no more. A quick triple kill. Security immediately counter-warding as well. It seems that Affliction was paying attention to what the Weaver's items were. Because he just saw an Observer Ward vanish away. Yeah. That's Caster's curse, right? Because uh, I was telling they know the timings, they know what fights they should take, so they go for the 18 minute rune. They unluckily don't have it, and they still go for the fight, and the duel happens uh, 6 seconds in the cooldown of Sonic Wave. So Queen of Pain could not burst Snapfire, which leads to all that snowball of things going bad for Lava Side. So had he waited that 6 extra seconds, things could have went well, but a bit too rushy. And the Estelle as well, he blinked in to get the Sonic Wave off to kill off the duel, um, but yeah, that was just the crippling fear on top of uh, exactly where the Estelle jumped, so he just jumped right into pretty much his death. Going for the BKB, obviously, because that's like the only way that you can actually deal with the crippling fear. I mean, it's what, seven seconds at max level? Yeah, seven seconds at max level. Yeah, but interesting part of that is that they forced the Dark Ascension. It's gonna be 20 minutes, daytime, no Dark Ascension, BKB on TB. So he knows what that means. They have somehow a free Roche, because Infamous should not try to contest this. If they contest, it can be a total disaster. Well, it's dropping low. Meta is almost oh, up, though. But yeah, they're not going to contest it. It seems Roshan does get taken down. And it's also a little bit scary. You're walking out without a meta available. Sonic Wave, Reflection taken care of. Wukong's command as well. They're stuck inside the Wukong's. Mortimus Kiss is coming out on top. That's the age already popped. Kataru going for the right clicks. But his meta is over in a second and he's gonna get the sun off onto sacred he's very low in hp night stalker on the run gonna go for the tp out lumiere as well sacred gets stunned up and they did win the fight in the end on the side of lava it looked very good at the start but that's the fortune of having an aegis and it being daytime kotaro he was kind of lost in the team fight because he had no sunder target because monkey king had the bkb on but then <laughs> Sacred just jumped in and gave him like a free sunder, which things weren't already going Infamous way and then definitely went worse. Uh, definitely looked like there was a chance to win that fight, the way they stacked their ultis on top of each other, but uh, yeah, the heads up play of giving the Quap, of course, the uh, Aegis instead of the TB, considering, you know, if a TB dies with meta, it... it, it, it like, yeah. He comes back as a useless piece of junk. <laughs> and it was also interesting that Frank had a free duo on the Ogre, but he's kept that. Because he knew if he locked down Buck, they would win the team fight. So he let the Ogre die, didn't get the bonus duo damage, but then he had duo to lock down the Buck. Smoke from Infamous. They do have Dark Ascension. They have Dagger. Should be at least one good kill. Well, Kim tanks the smoke. Pardo? Yep, again, yep. the two... the. Two Invis supports constantly tanking all the smokes that Infamous are throwing out. Affliction knows someone's on the high ground at the very least. Walking up, but they're just walking away. Kataro actually wants to turn it around onto Affliction. Science comes out. Kataro does have a Sunder available and a BKB. He's looking for a target to just drain all the HP off of. Still looking for a Sacred here. Does not get a good target. It's going to be a one-for-one one trade. Actually, they do manage to find the Weaver. Catch you just barely surviving as well. Jump on the backline, Kataro. We'll be sundering up Frank in the process. And along going very deep. 
contrário de ti. Oh, deu saiu. He wants more, because he knows the ultimate's over from Sacred. It's daytime. He's gonna keep chasing. Lumiere. Waiting for it. Okay. This guy was patient. So, Kotaro, he did pop the BKB, but he didn't pop meta. So, now he can definitely siege a tier 2 tower. Liu style? Oh, Liu style continued the chase. Sacred doesn't have the crippling fear, though. And there's a chase for more. Liu style in the tree gets spotted by Lumiere. Liu style is actually out of mana. Just barely has enough for a blink, though. And in comes the kisses onto Frank, trying to be that good support. Nice stun from Kachu to make sure Michael's kisses get ended. And there is Kachu. The supports are doing a very good job on the side of Lava. Like, honestly, yeah. very solid. Both the Weaver and the Nyx Assassin keeping their cores alive at their own behest. Yeah, it was a good death, death by Nyx. He might be happy dying here. And I mentioned like the support duo is kind of weird because you lack the reliable stuns and they don't like building four steps or glimmer capes. But even though like Weaver went for a four step and the Nyx also, so they built the right items to deal with the Monkey King. Oh, duel onto Affliction. The Ogre is again gonna get sacrificed. And another dual victory coming in. 60 damage, not the best just yet, but it's a, it's a nice build up. Yeah. And not only the Monkey King, it's also amazing against the Crippling Fear from the Night Stalker. It's decent against Snapfire Ultimate, so pretty well thought on the build from the supports. They know it's not a common item on the hero, but even though they, they went for it. Now, Kotaro farming up pretty nicely, but honestly, the cores are, for the mo except for Kotaro, fairly close to each other in terms of farm. Sacred really is going to need that BKB, but the most important factor is it's nighttime in 15 seconds, and that is a solid five minutes when Infamous want to go for constant fights. Yeah, and Lava, they're waiting for their Eye of Kari on Kotaro. Till two minutes to go, you can expect by 27 minutes if he doesn't die. So he just needs to be alive for this two minutes. Monkey's gonna have it too, but a bit later. No, he did by javelin. Okay, he's going towards the MKB instead of the Scotty. Uh, he was originally building a Milsrum and he actually cancelled the Milsrum to get the BKB. But I guess he wants MKB because of the 16% uh, evasion talent from the TB, which is annoying. But, you know, it's mainly just annoying. I think having more stats on the Monkey King could be very beneficial, especially in a Wukong's command. Yeah, but that casual ultimate orb is so weird. Okay, Buck has Agonies, it's definitely infamous timing, and it's interesting to see if Lava, they're gonna just try to break smokes, or if they wanna fully engage when they have the Scotty. Just two more camps for Kotaro. DD for Lumiere. Jumping in, they find another kill. Wukong Smack comes down though from Lumiere. The Mortimus kisses. The four stabs. Leo Style, is he gonna get out? No, he's gonna get taken down. That's a double kill. Dream Call even onto Kotaro. Pops the BKB. And his meta. They're gonna try and kill him off. Actually, he's gonna get stunned up right in the end. Tries to get the Sunder off, but he is actually done for. What just happened? Alone with the surprise Aghanim Scepter. He never saw it coming. Snaps the coil. Breaks his neck and gets stunned in the process. That is such a huge, fat, juicy mistake. Yeah. Infamous played really, really well on their timing. And Lava, they probably didn't notice it because they were also excited about the Eye of Skadi. But definitely, Nighttime plus Agony's coil is way stronger. And now they pop meta, uh, BKB also on TB, so they can't fight for two more minutes. Yeah, they can definitely walk up high ground if they want, but it seems they're a little bit scared of the two supports. Plus, Quop still has a sonic wave, and they're kind of wounded. But yeah, 
at least create uh, open up the entire map to get all the farm that with is now in favor of infamous and slowly but surely that monkey well slowly he just got a gigantic amount of money because <laughs> he did yeah. no damage to the tb there like he, he didn't touch him stains <laughs> and he's going mkb i don't know if he, ju he just sold the javelin or he thinks he's going Scotty anyway, because Kotaro has the butterfly on quick buy. But I believe he's gonna change. He's gonna change as soon as he see the Monkey King, because Lumiere is showing a demo edge, which shows definitely what you're building. I mean, if you which... see this inventory, you're like, I have no idea what he's building. <laughs> yeah, till he showed the demo edge. When he had the Javelin and the Ultimate Orb, it was fine. But now, you see Demo Edge, you know what he's buying, so you can expect Potaro to change his item on the quick buy very soon. Yeah, full MKB almost done. And Kotaro, yeah, gotta be careful of walking away. He changed it towards the Chrysalis, so that's probably gonna turn into a Silver Edge on the TB. Because, you know, why not add some more Invis on the side of Lava? You already have two heroes that do exactly that. Top tower is about to be yeah, I guess the target here is breaking Monkey King passive, Jingle Mastery. It can be pretty Radiant's meaningful. I don't know. He could go Satanic to survive, but they might lack damage. Smoke gets broken by Kachu. Bye bye. Uh, the classic. See you later. Smoke is gone, the support's just chilling, Kim is joining in, they're actually looking for a catch, Affliction's gonna be again a dual target, it seems. Frank, isn't it getting boring just only dueling an ogre? It might be boring, but it has 100 damage on top, so... True. It's gonna, it's gonna be a very strong core by the end of the game. It just feels so weird. Like, yeah, you kill off the ogre the entire time, but... How much does it do? Actually, Dream Coil comes in. Only catches Kotaro, though. That is problematic. They snap the coil actually coming through. But the uh, Legion Commander, of course, comes in with the save Sonic Wave onto Sacred. He's trying to run away, but the Aya Scotty Slow is too much to handle. Sacred's not fast enough. He's dead, bro. Sean just respawned as well after they killed off Sacred. Of course, doesn't have Dark Ascension anymore. That's going to be a free shard plus a free Aegis for the side of Lava. So basically, it was his own team that broke the coil with the first step. I like it. Because I guess no, it was it, kind of... No, it wasn't. It was the psychic headband from the ah, puck. okay. Because he was Cause... not... Look, It was actually a five-head play if they managed to do it. I 100% agree with you. It was just he was not looking to okay. the way that he got forced after. It, like, if it okay. was forced after. Ah, okay, okay. But it, it, it was... It should be a good move. Because he was, like, kind of shocked. The fact that he got coiled, but he just needs to do that. Break the coil, and then you have to press the attack. That's it. It's an easy counter for a 4k item, right? Just break, press the attack. Of course, you have the break damage, but you don't care. Actually, there was another play coming in. That's why, of course, Sacred died so deep. Is He knew what was going to happen, and he blinked on top of the Legion Commander to try and silence him so that he couldn't get the... Uh, stun the uh, press the attack off onto Kotaro so they like they knew exactly how they wanted to play that fight on both sides so there's gonna be a jump in they already got rid of Kachu dream call onto Neostyle he snaps the coil um are you oh. Lumiere really <laughs> oh no how why don't you just kill him yeah why he didn't hit like he's, he dropped the Wukong's command and was like, oh, Wukong's gonna kill him. I'm gonna focus on a, a weaver that walks by. And he had regen and now he's like full resources. Uh, oh my god. Dyer's top tower is about to be Radiant's top <laughs> well, Those are okay. those out overconfident moments where uh, you actually realize that the monkey doesn't necessarily do that much damage. So his Wukong's command, ergo, also doesn't really do that much damage. And they let the shard for Terror Blade. I, I was checking some stats someone po posted on Twitter, like uh, shards by by heroes, and TB was one of the fewest buys. 
per, of course, average, right, on the matches you have played. So there were a lot of TB matches and maybe like seven purchases out of 300 matches or so. Yeah, I don't... I mean... Okay, let's see. What does the Knicks have? He's got... Oh, the status resistance. Vendetta movement speed increase. That's pretty good. Uh, the Weavers one's also pretty decent. Of course, uh, I don't think they even have glimmers on the... Dire side, so the Invis detection doesn't do too much, but you can farm up creep waves a lot faster with the Swarm plus Geminus attacks the entire time. Yeah, and Cop and Legion already had theirs. And he found Michael, might be one more duo. Yay! Oh, that's sweet <laughs> cast range with headband. The value coming in, 120 attack damage. LC, Kotaro is lurking about to mid. He's got the Aegis anyway. So the moment they kill him the first time, his the rest of his team would have already rejoined the fight. I think Frank should go for Assault or Dazzle. He can, like, start getting solo kills, if you will. Well, that is going to be the Tier 3 tower gone. They don't have their Pakaru. Who's just uh, currently getting some split push shenanigans going in. I mean, they don't want to fight without Snapfire, so they're just sacrificing their mid t set of racks. A minute and a half left on the TB. Metamorphosis dropping low. Actually, Affliction needs to be careful. Because he almost... Oh, he is actually dead. The Illusion kills him. Affliction not having his best game so far. Oh, they spot out Lumia in the trees. They stun him up. He does get forced forward. Guess the Wukong's down, but the Wukong... Whoa. Sonic Wave blows him up, no buyback available for the monkey, no buyback available for Sacred, the slows are there. And that was the last second of the Metamorphosis, but it looks like Lava are now going to finish up the game because there is not much or anything that they can really do. They do have a buyback available on Sacred, but they kind of need them here. Alone cutting the Base. Creep Wave. Yeah, they have the tier one. Oh, oh. no stuns. Oh yeah, there's stun. Okay. Rip puck. He just waited for <laughs> for one second just to, to make me more anxious about it. Yeah, they still have tier one tower, so Glyph's gonna come up. Maybe one last team fight. Uh, I don't see much hope. You don't have a buck for 65 seconds either, so it's really tough. And Kotaro. He has the Eagle Song on Quick Buy. Is he going for the agility? Yeah, he's going for the agility. Uh, Blink Dagger. And, well, that should be uh, Megas being secured. Isn't that Demon Zeal, of course, for extra pushing power right now? Age gets reclaimed. But how can you kill them without the puck? Like, honestly, Alone has been doing pretty much all the heavy lifting in the team fights. Yeah. They do have a dagger and shard on snap. Yeah. Why does he not realize that he has a bug on him? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, they already called the GG. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that alone drop the GG. I, I was already thinking, like, he had a bug on him. Okay, why? Like, no movement. But yeah, the GG was called. They lost the game, and that is Lava. Taking the first game in this grand finals right now. And honestly, a lot of it was done on the back of those two supports. Kim and Kachu doing tons of work. Breaking every smoke gang that Infamous wanted to do. Sacrificing their life to keep their teammates alive as well. And uh, yeah, a couple of mistakes here and there on the Infamous side really did them in in the end. Yeah, and the TB, as mentioned, he hits one timing that it was like bizarre seeing a Monkey King trying to fight uh, a TB. That's a really, really hard uh, carry matchup. You mentioned uh, previously that Luna has a bad carry matchup against all hard carries, but it's not that bad against any, maybe against PL. But Monkey into TB is so, so hard. Because the idea is you have ring and no one can fight you inside the ring. But TB has infinite armor and he fights 
wherever he wants. He builds Skadi, which is an item that counters Monkey King. So they went all in on winning lanes, and they didn't manage to do that. That sums up uh, how Infamous played this game. Yeah, it was a rough game as well for the Infamous supports. They got completely pounced on every single time. And, you know, the Echo, BKB, MKB kind of choice from Lumiere in the end, uh, it, like, the, the MKB just didn't do anything. Didn't add any sustain to it. Of course, it helps against the evasion that the TB had, but you mentioned it. The moment that he spotted out that there was an MKB being built up, he just went for the swift bling because he knew, okay, I I, I should not go for that item build and uh, go for something that does not immediately get countered. And then you bought an MKB uh, fairly early on on the Monkey King to counter 16% evasion, which, yes, it's good that you counter 16%, but it's tiny amount that you would miss. So. Yeah. On his side, it also, like... You pierce armor when it procs, so against high armor cores, it makes sense. But doesn't make any sense after you buy one ultimate orb, because then you're just delaying uh, by one third your purchase time on the item. He already had a terrible start. Uh, I can definitely say terrible. It's not like, oh, it wasn't good. Like, you pick Monkey King into Legion, you want to stomp your lane, and you lose your lane. That's terrible. And then you buy ultimate orb, and after one ultimate orb, you're like, oh, I'm going the wrong way, I might go for MKB. It's too late to realize that. If he rushed M MKB straight away, could have worked, but not buying ultimate orb first. Like, after he thought about Scotty, he should go all in on Scotty. There's no going back. Yeah, but regardless, you know, Lava, they did show their stuff. They did show that they're... Uh... Well, at least warming up for that next TPC season and even the Grand Finals, but we'll be going towards a short little break until the next match starts. Don't go anywhere. More Lava versus Infamous after the break.
seconds. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more Bitzler Cup action. Grand final is continuing between Infamous and Lava, and right now we get it to see a hero we don't see too often, Astini. The Earth Spirit. Yeah, but it's not like any Earth Spirit, it's Moose Earth Spirit. And the guy is a god with that hero, so makes a lot of sense that they go for that choice. As we mentioned on the Weaver Puck game, uh, what counters then is Silence, and they already have Silence with Earth Spirit, they can have with Cop if he wanna go for Orchid. Of course, what we'll tell if he's going for Orchid is Infamous Picks. If they have a dispel like Legion, Abba, anything that sort, he'll go Kaya Sanj. Okay, a lone Invoker. Well, you did mention it. It is one of his uh, more favorited heroes out there. So we're definitely yeah, th looking for a nice show. They did ban on the last match. So they let Puck through to ban Invoker, which you think it's weird uh, if you have a Queen of Pain. But again, they know the players very, very well. So it was a very well targeted ban. And they'd rather play against a Puck. Uh, then Invoker beans alone Invoker. Well, um, I mean, it's a decent control on both sides. Earth Spirit's always nice in that factor, and the Invoker as well. We saw the Weaver previously, of course, played on Lava side doing tons of work, and we see it on the opposing side. It's the big question. They actually ban out the Faces Void themselves on Infamous, which normally you. Love to combo with an Ice Invoker on your team. Yeah, the teams they know themselves really well. That's why some bands we can't really understand. Uh, I guess when they mention, like, Beast Coast, they banned Void one game and they mentioned it's because they always play Void with Phoenix. But I haven't seen Lava playing it for so long. And also you have Invoker and Weaver, which are two of the biggest counters of Phoenix, so I don't really understand the ban, but we might understand later in the series, or in the draft, actually. Yeah, it depends on, of course, the choices that they want to go with themselves. Um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I have seen Lava play a Phoenix. I think they're not, there was one team, I can't really I can't think what team it was exactly, but there was one team that kept on picking Phoenix every single time. Uh, even it's uh, no pink. Oh yeah, no pink. Yeah, they they kept they love the Phoenix for some no. reason. A lot of the time, even Phoenix five. But uh, yeah, it's uh, luckily you you have this entire big brain where you remember literally everything that you see. Very useful for being a <laughs> a coach. Yeah. I can really give, like, it was exactly an interview with Hector on the post game of Lava Beast Coast, and Beast Coast banned Void after a Phoenix pick. But. Five seconds uh, remain. Man, man knows like, the stuff. <laughs> the only, like, the only heroes I'd be looking at when I ban Void is maybe I wanna, like, Bengal or Bristol offlaner. Otherwise, I don't see any. Like, any special matchup that you don't want to be against the Void. Void most of the time doesn't really lane... ...well. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it, a lot of heroes actually just hard counter the Void in the off uh, in, in the lane. So, currently, Ogre Magia added in the mix. So, Ogre 5, Earth Spirit 4. Big, beefy, tanky boys. Look at those arms. Come well, in for also you. There's real master. Brill Master, it's a hero that Void counters really well. So that's the only option I could see. <laughs> yeah, well, um, oh, it actually is pretty reasonable against the Weaver because of the, um, what's it called? Time dilation? Hey, it's yeah, but then... one of the stronger version uh, tools to deal with the Weaver. But do you want to protect the Weaver so much if it's a Weaver 4? Um, Unless it's like yes, a Weaver... That's the way you play the okay. game. Weaver is the most important oh, hero. In the... No, but, uh, you know, it's the small things. I, I guess that might be in the back of their minds if you're thinking that this is, you know, putting this Weaver as a 4 and he'd be in the lane with... You add in any 
reasonably strong support uh, with the uh, face of void and you could just run over the weaver the entire time is Timber what they could be thinking maybe they want to go timber saw you know time dilation is also reasonable against him you can die yeah i don't know it's it who bans faces void in this patch <laughs> i'm trying and to find a reason snapfire like they have two the two best combos with void invoker and snapfire and they cannot pick void anymore yeah it's maybe also the fact that sometimes when you have first pick here you don't really know what to ban because the enemy already showed their mid laner and you just picked your mid laner to counter it so there isn't like any band that are protecting the invoker so the only hero they thought they could like protect was the weaver so Dying that might be okay the brewmaster master. explained the void ban um luckily oh. i feel good that i reminded that on the last minute well he calls it he calls it <laughs> knows that they want to play brewmaster so they ban out the faces void Man is a genius in the drafting section, something that, um, well, some teams definitely could use out there. Wink, wink, hint, hint. <laughs> that, that <laughs> some have been using, but not so successfully, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what do they have? Oh, they have a really good anti-mage game now. But uh, it's too early. It no. P.O. No. Okay. Um, Brewmaster one shots the PL illusions with uh, that one, you know, the, the Storm Panda thingy. Uh, they have decent. I mean, it's it's good against the rest. Just it's okay. It's not superb. You can pick up a counter to it as well on the infamous last pick. The thing is, like, it's it's pretty decent against the support duo so you just can keep like killing them on team fights and kiting the brio master i think it's decent against the brio master even though he he does a lot of damage to the summons you can just like reset the team fight if they they don't have any way to burst you because they don't have any silence mechanism like okay you kill all illusions you know which one's the right pl what do you do you lift him up you <laughs> yeah, you lift him. You, you take him out of the fight, snap. and then you kill the rest of the team. <laughs> but then he's back, and the, he, he kills everything, you know? Uh... Yeah, but that's, you know, that is... The way that you should think about it is... That is a future me's problem. <laughs> right now, we're focusing they, on present me. And they banned Venom Viper. Do they want Monkey again? Or... Oh, they want Ven, right? Like, those two heroes are super good against Monkey, Sven, and Ursa. Radiant must choose. Um, let me think. You could also consider, even though not, you know, it's not 1, 2, 3, the hero that you think of as a counter to the PL. But I honestly always like Wraith King. I've seen him defeat PLs as of late with that cleave talent that he gets. But, you know, it's not the hero that you think of immediately as a counter to the PL, because normally you just get the Diffuser Blade on PL and then you counter the Wraith King. But there is that moment where you're like 25 to 30 minutes in. At that point, you just randomly see a Wraith King completely destroy a, a PL in return. But it's going to be the Juggernaut. Not a hero you see too often either. And I guess... Do you think it's a Battle Fury or a Mjolnir kind of game? If I say both, will you believe me? No. <laughs> I've, I've seen some building both. Uh, but I, I don't get why you banned Viper to pick Juggernaut, or if they wanted the PA and was banned. They still have the Legion, right? So it's a lockdown that goes through BKB. It can be one choice. Because they definitely looking for the offlaner. Uh, the thing is, there aren't many that go well with Earth Spirit. Um, Darkseer? Uh, I'll yeah, do Commander. Okay. I mean, I would have also not minded Darkseer. Fun. Uh, for the most part. Plus, Juggernaut should never be able to kill you in the lane. Was kind of my idea behind it. But, yeah, okay. Legion Commander, you called it. BKB Piercing. It. Duel coming through. Uh, yeah, the Juggernaut... I just haven't seen much Juggernaut lately. And they, like, the supports are not easy to kill on the side of lap. Like, this is not a great uh, Omni Slash game. 
Yeah. I don't know what he should do. I'm, I'm still thinking about the battle for a mile question. Because, like, having alacrity, you tend to go mile and then just play earlier. On the other hand, now you're playing against a Legion, so you need Sanjin Yasha. And if you need Sanjin Yasha, it's better that you go battle for it. Because when you go Mael, most of the times, you just want a Manta. Otherwise, you don't farm enough. Uh... Mm. That's uh, a tough I... choice. Uh, your prediction, who do you think is going to be able to take home this game? Are we going to get a game 3, or is it going to be Lava with the 2 no. to null? No. Hmm. I can see Infamous winning this game. I guess Infamous is gonna win. They they have like a decent Roche for a Radiant Draft because they have Alacrity, they have Weaver with the Minus Armor, they have the Healing Ward. Uh, they can definitely take fights till the PL has Manta Diffuso and they might be even able to fight into that. So... And the Jugger outscales the PL. On, on the very late game, it's definitely Jugger favorable. It, it takes like 35 minutes to get to that point, but it, it's like Jugger is one of those carries that is not worried about uh, PL getting Taras. Because the later it goes, the more likely you are to win the game. Of course, Taras is a good timing that PL wins fights. So let's say from 26 to 32, 33 minutes. But after that, Jugger just has a great game. So I can definitely see Infamous winning. I don't see that much damage for the duels. They do have a Queen of Pain, but doesn't seem to have such easy targets as the last game. It's harder to kill a Snapfire than to kill an Ogre just because it's not so easy to find the hero. Sorry. <laughs> You're talking like you didn't just see last game uh, Ogre get dueled 50 times in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because no, what I'm saying is like it's super easy to find an Ogre in the map and jump him because he's playing uh, like a, a hero that's providing vision and he's super slow. On the other hand, Weaver's providing vision, but it's super slippery, so you cannot catch the Weaver. And Snapfire is not a hero that's intended to provide vision, so he's playing on the back lines. So you cannot find, you cannot start a team fight dueling a Snapfire, and it's super hard to start dueling a Weaver. And to burst a Brew Master, you definitely need Sonic Waves. So they can't fight much, and if he's using his Sonic Waves to kill the Brew, then Jugger just free farms and win the game. It's, uh, I mean, it's going to be an interesting choice at, at the very least. And yeah, already marked up that he wants to go for the Milstrom. So then you're probably looking at a Mjolnir kind of game. Uh, Aghanim Shard is always nice on the Broom uh, Juggernaut as well against the PL. Get that magic immune moment where you actually do a lot of damage, surprisingly, uh, towards a PL. And he does almost nothing to you considering the illusions barely touch you and no diffusible blade damage comes through. So there are some nice combos. Uh, to work with, though it is just, you know, strange to see a Juggernaut in this batch at all. I mean, the, the the problem with Juggernaut this batch is mainly the very mobile heroes that you see, like Weaver, uh, Bada, no. you know, you cannot, if you Omni Slash someone, there's such a big chance that it goes horribly, horribly wrong and they just vanish. Omni yeah. Quap, blink, oh. <laughs> Also, what I do see with the hero is the same that happened with Life Stealer, and that we mentioned like in the first series where they picked Life Stealer, that they really wanted that magical immunity from first minute in the game. Uh, but it's the fact that every core now can buy a very early BKB and not be punished by that, because you have the nine to six seconds BKB, so you can have like a 18 minute BKB at PA, and you not gonna feel bad about it. Hello, On the previous patches, that you had 10 seconds to 5, if you bought an 18 second BKB, you would really suffer on the late game by having a 5 second one. So, I feel like every other core got buffed by this BKB change. Besides Jugger and Lifestealer, because they definitely do not want to buy a BKB. 
So uh, life seeds are a little bit more than Jugger, but Jugger normally, you know, is famously a hero that even if you're six slotted, you're like, I, I could I also get a moon shard, equip the Aghanim scepter. <laughs> Jay, uh, like everything done before you decide to get a BKB. <laughs> yeah. So like his differential became like a commodity in the market. Everyone has it also. So, and okay, that does not apply for South America. So I'll look stupid telling that. But team fights are not happening till like 18 minutes. That's where when teams get BKBs on course. But that's if you watch like European Dota, CIS, China, that you're gonna see like Toronto, Tokyo, 0, 0, 0 at 19 minutes of the game. You can watch replays, you're gonna see this pattern almost all the times, unless heroes are just like healing themselves in front of him. So there's no point that you are born with a BKB if the first team fight the enemy wants to take, they already have one. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Different regions, different strokes, and of course, with the fact that we don't have a well, international major, unfortunately, uh, we won't get to see those uh, changes, well, those duels between the regions this time, well, this patch anymore. But the next patch, you know, new heroes, new chances. I am really looking forward to some great changes. Make Winter Wyvern great again. Yeah. The only thing I don't want to see on the new patch is a new variant, right? Because <laughs> all the time we think uh, things are going to go back to normal, that we're going to have lands, and then something new pops up with COVID. So hopefully it's not so many. We're, hopefully we're close to done. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. So uh, we can just like forget about it. You know, it was uh, three crappy years, but uh, at least we'll have a story for our children. When we were young. Remember the COVID years! <laughs> yeah, because COVID is having way more patches than Dota 2. Like, we are ready for our <laughs> land, and then there's Delta, and then you are ready again, and there's Omnicro, and... And then Omnicron also has versions inside itself, and you're like, where's the Dota patch that has, you know, that comes along our normal patch? You know, we got A, B, C, D, where E, F, G, E. <laughs> yeah. You just have things to use your wallet. As of now, some new cosmetics, some battle pass, but no changes. <laughs> hey, at least we got the J the Ogre Jikiro skin, so in a sense, we all win. But Valve just a lot more than us. Will we install yeah, against alone? They're spooking each other. Yeah, they're trading farm on three lanes. Uh, not a huge advantage, if any. Maybe mid lane where Leo style has six denies. But Queen of Pain is just too strong. He's gonna steal the bounty that's... Ah, Invoker doesn't build bottle, so not huge. It's really hard for a Juggernaut to kill anyone in the bottom lane. Like, yeah, you've got the cookie... Uh, Blade Fury combo, but you're up against an Earth Spirit. He kicks away his own uh, LC if he gets spinned upon and rolls the other direction. So there's so many ways to just escape. And top going pretty deep. Catch you not going to die. Michael's just going to TP mid. Looking for the catch on to Leo Cell. Well, Kim suicides towards a neutral. But my, okay, Leo Cell just walks away and that TP is very sad right now. At least he gets a water room for his trouble, but he's gonna have to lose his brewmaster in trade. Speaking of which, Sacred is going for the meteor hammer. Oh, miss. Ah, uh, fortunately, no more evasion coming through. That you should die though. To Michael. Okay, someone told me on my live stream that Lally told on his live stream that. You build Meteor Hammer when you want to get the carry away of his lane as soon as possible. Because it's a mechanism of killing the tower and very strong at lane. But I still have a lot of doubts on the item. I mean, it's a decent bang for your buck. The recipe, I think, is 250 and you get the same value as a 450 crown. So, yes! You can, you save two uh, 200 bucks in that regard. 
It's decent regen, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a weird choice. Uh, especially on a hero like Brewmaster. Like, I get it on the Mars. Because you got... Like, the Spear of Mars is pretty a pretty lengthy stun. And he's also terrible at pushing. But the Brewmaster actually is also a hero that, with Primal Spring, you're actually pretty good at pushing. Like, Primal Spring does surprisingly much damage against towers. Yeah, and... I also think Brewmaster is a super good hero for defending towers. And... If you're defending a tower, you don't want to have Meteor Hammer, right? Yeah, you're and never using as it in I, a fight. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I think the team that better scales is Infamous. So I believe they should be the ones looking like to leave the map closed instead of opening up the map. If, if you get what I mean, like, you shouldn't be looking to kill the enemy tower, but to protect yours. As long as the map stays with the six towers up, it's better for you because you're looking for the late game. And Brewmaster defends the tower really well because he's a sort of Tide Hunter on that sense because you never want to dive a Tide Hunter that has level 6. You you don't want him to use Ravage. The same thing applies to Brewmaster because if you waste a lot of resources, he's just going to ultimate and stun you and manage to defend the tower. So you just like stay alive, saving your ultimate for a big team fight. Catch you won't be the one staying alive. Rotation in from alone gets the kill secured, keeps sacred alive. It's also, you know, two iron charges on for the Voker. They're looking for Kotaro, but he does have doppelganger, so it's kind of really tough to con take him down. Bottom Frank going for the duel. In comes the Astal Sonic Wave. Boom gets the kill. Duel victory. The moment he gets himself level six, and that is some perfect communication between the Astal. And his superb offlaner, Frank. I'm happy when I see those things. When I see, like, Lava playing well. Some may think not, but I really cheer for the region. I really want to see the things playing well. And I know Lava, they have some good minds, some good players. And they just need to be in synergy. And it's, it's nice to see it when they show synergy. It's... It's pretty good for the region. They are definitely a team that can represent as well at international tournaments as they already did at a major. So cool to see those clutchy plays. And that's uh, something that needs to be ironed in to your play style on your team at pretty much all moments in the game. And it's going to take some... Uh, Getting used to, of course, swapping players out willy-nilly means that that's going to be problematic. But to be fair, this this Lava roster, or ex Thunder Predator roster, has been together for quite some time. And you love to see it. Jim on the run, Earth Spirit, Cookie Stun, no mana left, Shotgun comes out, Affliction gets the kill. Slight advantage for Infamous right now. Lumiere, even though he did get taken down bottom lane, had a pretty solid lane against the uh, LC. But else he's got the armlet, so... Yeah, that's a tough lane all of a sudden. It's interesting to see the item build. So Weaver is going for a Rod of Atos because Invoker already has Urn. And I'm wondering if that's the reason why why Sacred doesn't go for Midas because Invoker might go and he doesn't want to have like two cars sitting with Midas. Like, just farming might be... One explanation for that Meteor Hammer, which I'm still trying to find some. Well, uh, Meteor Hammer doing the work. Tower's about to drop. They could get some farm. The value coming in onto the Brewmaster. And the yeah, nine minute tower taken down bottom lane. They're do trying to get the push in themselves. And not really any reason to try and defend a bottom tier one tower. Yeah. So that was his choice, like not defending this tower, just trading towers, which I disagree, but he might know something about the matchup. They might have a different idea on how to play it, and I totally respect it and understand that he might be correct with that approach. Well, it looks like they're starting to group up a little bit towards mid. You know, gotta get that SA mid uh, fight for the tier 1 going. Sacred wants to meet your hammer the tower. <laughs> I've got this meet your hammer and I'm going to use it as much as I possibly can. 
And you can actually do it without getting hit by the tower because it's kind of bugged the cast point or the cast area. Okay, getting the DD or not. Yes, for the style. Because actually it also hits a bit away from this. Yeah, that's what he's doing now. Yeah. Now he's properly doing it. And the tower is slowly melting. No tree to try and keep it alive. And luckily no repair kits. What if they actually just brought repair kit back? Just think about that. Just No, 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 man. No, <laughs> I have nightmares with this. Because we lost like a major qualifying series to Beast Coast because of... <gasps> and they got like three games in a row. Two of them we won. And the one that really matters, we lost. Uh, I mean, it would be the biggest middle finger from ice frog ever if he actually just decided you know what we'll just bring it back everyone loves it <laughs> the entire community loved that item uh so currently sacred in trouble sonic wave available for leo cell doesn't have the mana yet but the meteor hammer coming down oh it lands on catch you but the save from frank oh my lord it comes through he actually gets the full duration cast off of that stupid item it's Two and a half seconds channel time. Two and a half fucking seconds. Oh. Oh. Omni. Gets kill. Walks away. I mean, sure, why not? While you're busy. Get a freebie. Uh, Frank has to stay next to Affliction. But the sonic wave is huge, on to three targets it goes, Lumiere tries to run away, but the double kill coming in for Leostal, we'll find Frank, and Leostal probably as well has a blink in a second, they can't go too deep, especially with the positioning that they're standing, why are they fighting behind the tier 2 tower the entire time, Michael actually going in onto Leostal, Leostal's gonna get taken down, now Michael just needs to Shikuchi away, why are they here, the tier 1, tier 2 tower mid only lost 200 in HP, why are they there, they play APU style like this, we don't have breaks, we cannot stop, you know, we just stop when we go back to base and then we just run and then again and again and again because Jugger used his ultimate and he stayed there, like fighting under a tier 2 tower, not caring about like farming or hitting his timings, meanwhile Kotaro, he doesn't give up about what's happening, so he's just like farming his defusal, okay, there's a freebie on Invoker, okay, I'm gonna get it because it's part of like my farming route, I'm gonna farm this guy, because there was no objectives to be done there uh, for Infamous. Uh, they do have a Midas now for a loan, which can help him stay scaling, but really weird decision. Even though they got some kills, it seems really weird. Oh, well, they are 2k ahead. So far, so good. And we are still at the top of the board. Sacred. Or is actually farming pretty well thanks to that meteor hammer. That is one big plus. Getting that net worth behind it. That gives you, you know, some stats compared to, let's say, the hand of might. Uh, to be fair, if you have to make the trade off, either you go meteor hammer or you go hand of Midas. I'm happy he, he chooses meteor hammer. Even though you normally don't really want to use it in a fight. But 40 attack speed, it just feels so awful. But the thing is, Brew Master, you really need that Agonist to have a, a good team fight, and then after, I don't know, 35 minutes, you really need Agonist Refresher to be as annoying as you'd like to be. And with Meteor Hammer, sometimes it gets really hard to scale past the Agony Scepter. Because now it's the time that Meteor Hammer is helping him farm a lot. It also helps on team fights because there isn't enough control, enough stuns. There aren't that much heroes involved. But Here's soon style. it's gonna become useless. Jumping away. He's got those infused raindrops. Kim actually tried to get in aggressively. Kotaro's got the defusal. Alone is in trouble. Alone is dead. The Mortimiscus has come out defensively. But it's a one for one trade and not one that Alone would love to make. Well, the rest of the team is here, though. Okay, two for one. Yeah, sure, they'll take it. Especially considering Lumiere is the one that secures the kill. Yeah, it's an interesting choice by Kotaro to go Diffuso first, understanding that Infamous, they force teamfights all the time. 
so he's gonna farm a little bit slower as if he went directly for Yasha. You can go Yasha, Diffuso, and then complete the Manta. But he decided to go Diffuso straight ahead to be able to help a team fight. And I do not say it's paying off already. He got one kill, but it might pay off at this Roche fight. Well, they're smoking up. They might know that it is up. They don't actually have any vision in the area. They're pinging all over the place. They don't have a scan, unfortunately. And Roche is already dead. Meet your hammer from Sacred coming in. He's halfway towards his Ags already. And yeah, with the Mind's Armor from the Snapfire, with, of course, the Alacti buff from the Voker, and with the fact that you're playing with a Juggernaut, Roshan does die. And, of course, also the Weave. They have a really good Roche lineup. Yeah. That's what I was happy with during the draft. Lucille running away. Tornado hits him on the Keister. Trying to lock him down. Uses himself up. The roll comes in from Kim. Magnetized. Does a lot of damage. There's going to be Lumiere spinning his way around. Does have an Omni Slash available as well. But Alone is trying to run away from Kotaro. Who is currently being kited out of the fight. The duel coming through onto Michael. Weaver's going to get taken down. The Omni Slash won't be able to find Frank. And... Yeah, Lumiere can't really get any connections in the fight. In the meantime, they're, still ch they're actually chasing after the PL. Meteor Hammer coming in. Oh my god. He oh, Sacred is a beast. That's the reason he got it. But the save from Frank. The offlaners are just amazing. I mean, that one I do have to say I love. Lifting him up with the Storm Panda and then using the Meteor Hammer to stun him up. I didn't even comprehend that that was a possibility. <laughs> and he did that very well. He timed perfectly, so... Of course, you can cancel the lift, but yeah, that was pretty well done. Oh, Kim getting stun locked with the kisses on top. Will be another kill on to him alone, trying to get away. But the cookie actually forced him out of harm's way with the TP to safety. And Affliction, Sacred gonna run away. Affliction is actually not taking that much damage even as a mech and need be. Duel comes out onto Michael. Rip Michael. He just comes to say hi towards everyone. And gets absolutely stashed to death. But it was a weird decision at first from Lava to fight after Infamous got the Aegis. Because... I understand it's frustrating that you just rush Diffuso and you don't manage to get a team fight, but they already have Aegis, so there's not much point on fighting that team fight unless you believe you can take out two lives of the Jugger, and they had no way to do it. So, a bit of a misplay from Lava on taking that fight right after the Roche. On the other hand, Infamous, they are definitely playing the strength start of their draft. As I mentioned, Radiant Draft with Invoker Alacrity, Weaver minus armor, Snap minus armor, Healing Ward is super good to the Roche, and they saw that very small window to enter Roche, and it was very like clutch play. It's respect to them. It's it's a difficult play to do. Like 15 minutes Roche, you just go as five. It can be Extremely risky, especially no. you're playing against a PL with the Fozo, but they managed to do it really well. I'm actually... You know, what I always find strange is that very rarely do I see a Brewmaster go for the Shard. I, right now he's going for the Axe, which obviously is the better choice than he wants to go for the Radiance, but... It always surprises me that no... Brewmaster ever... Like, especially in a game like this... AoE, slow, and a disarm against the PL Illusions sounds pretty good. Even has attack modifiers, which is, I mean, of course, you're not using it. Uh, <laughs> you don't have any use of attack modifiers on the Brewmaster, but still, it gets attack modifiers on that stupid Void Brewling. I didn't even know that. The problem is that the hero has some farming issues. And 1.4k means a lot for a Brewmaster. That's what you that's... got the Meteor Hammer for. <laughs> yeah. Because as mentioned, he needs the Agonies. And it's gonna take him more 2 minutes maybe. And then he wants to go Radiance. Okay. But if you want to go Refresher and you delay it by 1.4k, it's a lot. They found Ketchu. Well, they'll be able to take him down. Yeah, but, the, you know, 
of course, the refresher is amazing as well, obviously. But I was thinking, you know, have one. It just feels weird not ever seeing the the broom link thing because I think its spells are. I mean, who cares about the fire panda? Like for real. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> it does it does a nice AOE burn damage. Okay, cool. But that uh, that primal spring brewling, the, the, the void brewling, it, just, it always feels so nice. AOE AOE disarm. How is that not good? Mm. That sounds good, but there's like the sounds and there's like effectively good and it gets attack modifier so you can actually get an ayaskari on brewmaster and it works <laughs> yeah definitely it's paddy dezo brewmaster why not hey uh, <laughs> Kotaro? i think ramsey's also played it safely from <laughs> before back in the day but yeah Kotaro, he's in trouble double ganger away tries to disengage but the only side comes out bounces onto leo style who's going to be able to of course soak most of it with the uh, yule scepter but they already lost the PL, and that is very problematic to continue any possible fight. Gachu just walks in saying, hi, kill me too. I want to join my buddies. Yeah. And a nice triple kill coming in for Infamous. Yeah. I guess it's kind of a peek off on the PL that the supports try to save him, because he's not actively looking for a team fight. He knows he cannot play this team fight against Aegis Juggernaut. He really needs to farm that Tarask, and then they will be finally ready to fight. Well, currently... There we have again, Sacred coming in, Meteor Hammer does very little because it gets stolen by Affliction who is now in trouble and gonna get dueled, that should be well, at least another plus 20 coming in, Sacred on the run, has that Axe of course done, so he's got one Primal Split the moment that his first Primal Split is pretty much done, his second one is, I think it continues the cooldown, does it? Which cooldown, sorry? If you primal split, I actually don't know for sure, but if you primal split, does your cooldown already start ticking down for the second one with Ags? Yes. Okay. That's why when it has like Octarine, it seems like it has Perma Ultimate because the duration is almost enough to run one charge. He doesn't have any extended duration, brewing screen, drunken pro. Okay. Interesting talents. He also had that weird combination with Cinder Brew at one point. Yeah, it still has that <laughs> with, with like fire and like bat riders were picked and everything. It was very confusing. Yeah, no, it's not a specific spell anymore. It's just anything that triggers uh, damage. Uh, yeah, but I, I love the fact that it was so confusing because you had to get like a fire using hero in your game and it was like, okay, who the... You have to think about that in your draft. Who has fire? Yeah. Most of the time you saw they, bats with the broom masses all over the place. They let this in the game maybe for two weeks or so. Yeah. It was pretty. But fun. then when they when they like removed that exception, it was super strong, and people were playing like Brio Rubik in the lane because you'd like fade bolt right after. It was so strong. I'm actually wondering about one small thing though. So a basher is an attack modifier, right? Yes. Does that work? Some sorts, on, yes. Does that work on the? Void Brewling then? Yeah. Okay. Because of course, like, you know, with Monkey King, it's it, the attack modifier doesn't work there. So I'm kind of wondering where, where, you know, it's Valve. Where's the drop off point? What hero spells yeah, does it work on? What doesn't it? So, that's why I gave like half an answer. Like at some point, yes, because it's bugged with Arc Warden copy because it copies the Monkey King effects. It's bugged for Monkey King and does not work for Slardar, Faceless Void, and 
Something else? Uh, can't. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I don't know about those heroes that you did just mention. So, uh, yeah. I mean, at, at least it was a Dota 1 thing. I think it still runs, so you cannot perma bash, so it doesn't work for a starter. Yeah, but Slarda just gets himself uh, up to items and then he can still perma bash. They're still jumping in. There's going to be a duo coming through onto Sacred. But he gets healed up in the process. Can he get his Bruce split off? He silences as well. Sacred's going to get knocked down, can't respond. But the Omni side gets himself two kills in return. They're continuing the fight alone, trying to run away. But he's dusted up. He's going to be taken down. Kataro is all surrounded by enemies. In comes the Kisses of Affliction. The spin is a very dangerous thing to deal with from Lumiere. They're far trying to expect that it's the real one, but the cookie stun comes out from Affliction. They stun him up. Kotaro, he tried to play the baiting game, but in the end, it is going to be too much to handle. The infamous lineup spots the real one. Well, takes them some time to spot the real one out, but eventually they do manage to get the kill. Yeah, he had the Reaver on cool here. He really needs Taras to fight, and losing that team fight makes it possible that Infamous gets Roche before he managed to get Taras. Of course, it's kind of a late Roche, so they need to wait one more minute, but I guess they lost the game on the decision to take this fight, honestly, because I don't see them fighting Roche without Taras, and he won't have any time because he's dead and he cannot farm. And the Mier is also almost done with a uh, full butterfly, which is going to be very problematic for the PL in his illusions. Uh, yeah, and, and Shard is super great also here. And he's yeah. going to have the Shard. From Roche for free, so that's going to be very problematic. The PL is, uh, is already really struggling to get anywhere close to the Juggernaut. Like, he can kill off the rest of the... Well, he can reasonably kill off the rest of the lineup. I mean... We saw how tanky the Brewmaster was there. He's running around with 2.8k HP. They had to expend pretty much everything to try and kill off Sacred. He's going for the end disc at that point. You can just bet your ass he's going to have two brew splits every single time. Stay down. Yeah, he really needs that so he's not bursted. And if he can guarantee he's not bursted, he's going to be extremely annoying in team fights. And it's interesting to see that Lumiere, he went, I guess, the most correct build, which it was Mael into Sanjay Asha into Mjolnir because I mentioned like I really like Mael but I really think he should go Sanjay Asha and yeah he did both why not and now they go Roche and Kotaro he's 800 away from Tarask which is basically the fight he lost yeah, they're uh Looking pretty good here. Lumiere has got the Aegis and the Shard, so uh, he is very much at the top of the board. With no one even in striking distance as we speak. Screen for Lincolns, why? For the duo, don't do that. Go Scotty. <laughs> Go something else. No. I hate Lincolns. <laughs> I hate Lincolns, so don't go. <laughs> yeah, just do anything else that gives you stats or whatever. Get an axe. Have fun. Go ham. I think I think Lincoln's such a terrible item at this meta. Like, you might do it against Doom. Well, there. I think Duel is a pretty decent one as well, but yeah, I would say Doom is fairly annoying to deal with. Uh, Roar from Beastmaster could be also pretty game losing if you get caught. Yeah. Even Grimstroke to a degree, like a Soulbind could also completely screw up your team fight. Like, imagine he had Lincolns here, it would have been broken like four times. And Oh. Of course, there can be a duel. They're gonna try and get aggressive because they spot a player TPing out towards the bottom lane, but that's the Weaver gone. Sonic Wave comes out. The Aegis is gonna get popped. Okay, they got the first life. He still has himself Omni Slash available. Affliction dropping low to Kataro. Does have, of course, that uh, Heart to Tarrasque. Dodges the EMP. And he's looking for Affliction. Does get manage to get himself the kill. Sacred Bruce Bliss over, but, you know, it's a Brewmaster with an Ags. There's a second. Goodbye. 
yeah, they take one lane of Rex uh, in one of the strongest timings of build. That's the Tarask. So, I guess it's pretty fine for Infamous here. This support exchange and Aegis being used. Of course, now they do have a downtime of 90 seconds. Still, Brewmaster has one of his ultimates back. So, they should play way, way safer. And they should be cutting waves. Like, Weaver should be playing top lane to delay that lane. And Invoker is doing right with the Fart Spirits at bot. Yeah, they did, of course, get the tier 3 tower on the side of Lava while all of that shenanigan was going on. So. Wasn't a complete loss for them. Not worth wise, they're not too far behind. Sacred has got that Aeon Disc pretty much ready to roll. No Brew Split available though, so this is definitely a moment where they can try and kill off the Brewmaster, not really fearing the nastiness he brings. Lumiere going in, Kutaro quickly just getting away. The kisses come through. Oh, those are some bad kisses, no? Just to protect. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I would honestly let him die without ultimate and save resources to defend bottom because... That's how good of a teammate you are right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't just care. let him I, die. <laughs> I don't want to be at my friend's funeral. I want to win the game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a famous quote right there. I don't want to be at my friend's funeral. I want to win the game. Right there. That that yeah. one, we can quote that one. Someone write that down. Astini, famous words. I can I can have a voice line. <laughs> <laughs> yep, T I here we come. Well currently they're smoked up, infamous, up to the high ground they go. Lincoln Sphere getting a little bit closer with that ultimate orb already picked up. Got you. Why are you here? Help me. Sonic Wave comes out on the back line though. They get rid of Michael. That's no buyback available. He's got the Ags as well. They're looking for Affliction. They're trying to kill off everyone while Lumiere's distracted. Catch you with the distracted blade. Leostal is going to get Omni Slash in the end regardless. There is a, a PL doing stuff. <laughs> Getting lifted up. Do we get to see the Brew split Meteor Hammer? Come on, Sacred. Oh uh, no, won't be able to drop it just down. But they're continuing the fight. And this gets popped. Sacred running away. Lumiere is going to be the target. Doesn't have a spin for a couple of seconds. Lumiere is in trouble. His man is gone. Lumiere, he is actually dead. Ish. Finally does die. That uh, butterfly doing a lot of work. Sacred's going to go for the TP back to base. But the roll, of course, you can't TP in front of a Nourish Spirit. Sacred's going to die as well. That's a full team wipe. That is a yeah. very, very big fight. And you know what started that entire fight, Astini? That fat ogre waddling away, pulling the juggernaut away from everyone on Infamous, and then they just bounce while the jugger is gone. Yeah, and also kudos to them because they had the uh, post control. So they could buy back and TP. That was very smart. And. I guess I mentioned the time is of Peel, right? That he has Tarask and that's the small window where he wins team fights against Jugger. And Jugger is taking the team fights at this very window when Peel can outplay him. So I think they just needed to be more patient and not look into fights on their own jungle near outpost that enemy has control and vision. I I don't see what they should be doing there. And that's what differs Lava from Infamous, which Double makes like, Lava being a, a better team overall. Infamous is playing really well and they're improving a lot, but let's say Lava, when they play their high level, which they show that Major as first DPC and second DPC last year, they just outclass Infamous. Oh. Disengaging right now, Katara farming the enemy side of the map. Roshan, it's gonna be at least a minute and a half until it could possibly respawn. Networth is almost completely dwind. I mean, what is a SA, you know, match, a, a showdown without a very solid lead dropping to zero? <laughs> yeah. And you see, Frank, though, he only has 60 dual wins. By that time, last game, he had, I don't know, 130, might be, something like this, because it's 
It's not really easy to win duels against this infamous lineup. Hmm. Uh, next Roach up. Like, we're gonna have the timer in 50 seconds. Might be up to 3 minutes. And that's what decides the game. It's super important to look at buybacks as of now. So Legion doesn't have one. That should be the main target for Infamous. They should like... If you use Omni Slash to kill Legion, it's worth it. Because you want to take out the hero without buyback. Um, the most important fight of the game. That juggernaut, he uh, did listen to you. You know, getting rid of that Lincoln's choice. Instead, turning into the eye of Oh, thank god, yeah. Lumiar is, play is paying for the full package of Astini. Astini Premium, yeah. I get the entire package, otherwise, uh, well, you'll lo start losing games. In the meantime, Brewmaster continuing, of course, his Radiance run. Gonna take quite some time, still no shard. Breaks my heart, but I'll have to I... live with it. Can I bet with you that he's not gonna buy that Radiance? Because uh, when I first saw it, I'm like, he's not gonna buy it. It's impossible. And now I still... Roche I, is up. I don't see him buying this item. Roche is up. This is pretty big. Like, it's a Aghanim Scepter Roche as well. Yeah, th that's the Roche of the game. Th yeah, that, that could decide everything. You definitely cannot give that Roche away. Yeah, so Brill, no buyback. What you should do now if you're infamous, you farm your buyback on Brill. You oh no, look at where is heading. <laughs> you die, you buyback, and you win the game. That's what high level teams do. Well, Kutaro, what he's doing, he's jumping on Affliction, who's gonna go for the TP, but interrupted by the Yules, and they'll be able to find themselves the snap fire for free. A quick dual victory added on top and immediately buying back while their tier 4s are actually dropping. They lost the tier 4 on the side yeah. of Lava. This is, uh, it's getting a bit dicey. Their base is under siege. Roosbeth coming out. The, honestly, all Infamous have to do is distract them for long enough because slowly but surely the base is continuing to take some beatings got you just walking in he's got that buyback knows exactly what he needs to do he's literally a living ward walking in for vision i i would definitely bloodlust before keeping like bloodlust in your form anyway. number two rose is almost dropping it's very close to death kim Trying to make sure that at least he can try and yoink it in the in the Roche pit with his BKB. He's rolling all over the place. He's jumping in the kill him. Yeah, Roshan is dead. The age is for Kataro. And what do they manage to get? The cheese gets nom nom nom. Do got the Ags. Queen of Pain's got the Aghanim's blessing. And that looks like it's going to be Lava taking home the W. The GG already gets called by Infamous. It's over and said it's done. And Lava, one team fight was all they needed at the end. They come back against the Infamous... Well, overwhelming advantage, but that harder to rasp that you mentioned definitely felt like uh, the PL was uh, at 1.2 strong to handle. Yeah, I wish we could have seen like the other part where Jagger can win fights against PL, but he just fought like twice against the Tarask, which he should be kiting fights by that time. And yeah, I guess Lava they played really, really well. So they really deserve the win. Infamous, they played what they usually play. That's like run at them style. And they're pretty good at it, actually, because they have a maze laning phase. They take good decisions on that sense of looking for kills, spotting possible pickoffs in the map. Uh, they have good team synergy. But when you play against a team that knows how to kite those fights and hit their timings, then it's super hard to get the win. So. Very, very well played by Lava to deal with that aggression from Infamous. And especially the one play that I'm going to remember about this game is catch you on the Ogre towards the Radiant Jungle where he literally was like, I uh, guarantee it, I, whatever happens, he definitely did that on purpose to drag the Juggernaut away from the fight because only the Juggernaut chased him and his entire team got mowed down by a big just jump from Lava immediately afterwards. That was so well-timed and it took, honestly, like half his team was already dead before Lumiere finally rejoined the fight and at that point the PL was too much to handle and it was a beautiful performance from Lava. They take the series 2 to null and 
They win, of course, the first Bitzler Cup, get themselves 10 grand for their troubles. Infamous will, of course, go home with four, so they'll definitely, you know, still be happy. But uh, this bodes well for the next season of the DPC League. Yeah, I'm very hyped to see what Lava can bring on next DPC season because they didn't even reach top four. So I'd say that means that the top four is playing really well. Lava of Dota, uh, so Thunder, Infamous, Beast Coast, and Apple Kings. And having Lava playing that high level, you have also Balrogs and especially Infinity coming up from second division. Infinity, they they ended up 7-0, if I recall correctly. Yep. They dropped maybe two matches i think they like, dropped one possibly? or one against g pride only i, I think they yeah. lost one uh, like that last game <laughs> yeah against g pride i guess so yeah yeah so they played really really well at division two and that means we're gonna have amazing competition at the upcoming season of dpc but before that we gonna see each other the mini major right Yep, there's of course the mini major, uh, which will be in uh, two weeks, or is it one week? Two weeks? I don't remember. Two weeks. Two weeks. I believe it's from 11 to 13. So, two weeks. Okay, yeah. Uh, two weeks, there will be the mini major. Of course, the top four teams of South America taking each other on. Beast Coast, Thunder Predator, Infamous, who just got 2 0 And last but not least, I'm missing a name. Rain work. Up, Apple Kings. Oh, yeah, that Apple just King lost of Kings. Yeah, they actually did 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 get owned as well by the team that just got owned. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen there. Uh, of course, that will be uh, slightly before the patch. It was announced by Valve that there will be a very you know the the big patch will happen at the end of February, right before the DPC or sometime before the DPC uh, season two starts. There's a lot of Dota coming in, there's a lot of action, and there is plenty more to witness on this specific channel. Astini, do you have any message for the viewers at home? Thanks for everyone that watched it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any feedback, feel free to reach us. It's always great to have some feedback from the guys watching. And see you soon at the Mini Major. Yep, hopefully you enjoyed the show. I would like to thank Astini. And all the viewers at home, and of course all the teams competing in the Bitzler Cup. Congratulations again to Lava. They looked sublime, especially considering the last couple of days they had some very big problems with the fact that they all had COVID. And uh, some of them had it pretty rough, uh, from what my understanding was. But regardless, they managed to break right through and win the entire ordeal. Have a wonderful day, and in case we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.